Hello and welcome to session number 53 of Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. Hi, everyone. Hello. 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 Hi. Welcome back. It's been a little bit and we, we left on uh, an exciting note last time. I hope the anxiety has kept you up at night for weeks. It's been quite the cliffhanger. <laughs> Let me bring the scene in. Oh, 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 oh. Oop. <laughs> and here we are. Here's the table. Welcome, wow. welcome. I I've got am... a problem, though. You have a problem? Yeah, it's been so long, I don't remember what happened. Oh, no. We should do something about that. Yeah, my memory is uh, We should fading. really put it to, to practice like a like a retelling of the past session's events, like a like a re minder. Recapitulation. But that's an excellent idea. Why don't we start with that today? Let's let's do a test run. Who's going to volunteer? I, I volunteered guess... Dennis. Huh? Oh, yeah, volunteer well, Dennis. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, go Dennis. <laughs> uh, what do I do? <laughs> you you volunteer someone else now. We've all yeah. volunteered you to volunteer someone else. Oh, okay. Um, how about a new person? Wow, so, new it's person. Kind of hazy. Put me yeah, on the spot. Yes. Like me? Someone had to do it. Someone had to do it. I'll be the bad had guy. To do it to him. <laughs> well, well, well. In Tests that case, it's, it's, it's a good thing I have a test ready to go. Oh wow! How oh, oh, excellent! <laughs> Uh, sure. Would you like some background music? Uh, just whatever's playing is fine. I don't have anything special. Usually, I, I have like a little track for recaps. Yeah, recap oh. music is, bum, bum, is great. Bum, 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 bum. It's a little quiet. Is this good? Eh. All right. Um, let me just bring it up uh, here on screen. And okay, test slide. Test slide, yeah. Since we're testing this new recap thing. Yeah. <laughs> mm, that's a good word. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll workshop it. Well then, <clears throat> I will leave the stage to you. Okay. Um, so I don't know about you guys, but here it's been it's been kind of cold and blustery and windy, so. I thought it was maybe a good day just to relax, uh, pull up a fire, get cozy, get a drink, and I have a little story to tell you. Aww. So everyone is uh, ready. How did you um, get a picture of my living room? I snuck into your house while you were sleeping. <laughs> oh, Damn, crap. you have a fancy living room. Yes. I well, mean, I do, I do what I can. <laughs> Real fire. Yes, yeah, it's, it's just <laughs> careful. It's really hot. Don't touch it. So if everyone is all settled in and got yourselves cozy, we will recount what happened last time. So, where we last left our heroes, and our new friend Cuddles, we were out to save Tekka and get him out of trouble. The rooms around the tower have been chosen with care, as we prepared for the rescue, if we ever get there. Brooke volunteered to be the first to stand guard, while Virian spent her time watching the stars. With Pip in the kitchen and Pontifex hogging the sauna, the evening was quiet. Maybe too quiet, thought Devamia. Before she could go up to see what was the matter, she was surprised to see Cuddles ascending the ladder. I just want to play. There's no time to fuss. In the chat, we all said the same thing. Cuddles sus. We <laughs> 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 ran to the kitchen, leaving Cuddles alone, to find Pip, Brook, and Pontifex had been turned into stone. He, calling for Brook, summoned Virian down, who noted something seemed off with our gravel hound. Soon Pontifex was begrudgingly pulled from his rest, but he was confronted by a brand new guest, a creature so fearsome it gave us all pause, and somehow we all knew just what he was called. He slithers through dust, and soon someone said, Shit, guys, I think this is Cuddle's dad. Though faced against him, we all felt quite diminutive. I'm sure y'all know what happens next. Roll initiative. <laughs> Striking with swords proved to be in vain, because getting too close somehow scrambles your brain. Gunshots rang out, and arrows flew true, and Pontifex knew exactly what to do. Stamped firmly in hand, his voice it did swell, as he recited by heart the words of his spell. 
And in the midst of the battle appeared the play of the game. He cast Flaming Sphere. And I'm going to take an intermission here to remind you guys that I did have three weeks to do this. So this is what I originally had done. <laughs> and also, if you have that thing where, like, looking at lamprey mouths makes you uneasy, this is probably a good time to, like, not look at the screen for a couple minutes. I appreciate the disclaimer. Oh, dear God. Whoa! Ooh. Ooh. What? I had oh. three weeks. <laughs> Yo! Anyway, back to the story. Yeah, that's me! <laughs> <laughs> So, Slither soon retreated, tired of the scuttle, of the struggle, and I promised that nothing bad happened to Cuddles. <laughs> the combat was ended, but there was no rest to be had. We still had a problem. Our friends might be dead. With no way to fix our stone situation, worst case, the tower had some new decorations. And just when we <laughs> thought they were stuck that way, the stone-covering book, Brook, began cracking away. Squeak's shell broke next, and soon he was freed, but not from his service to Pip, it would seem. Though he was shooed back from his brief jaunt home, Pip remained completely locked into stone. With a way to help Pip nowhere in sight, Brook and Pontifex left to rest for the night. Varian stayed up and decided to look for something of use in Pip's potion book. And as if he had foreseen that it would be a necessity, Pip had been working on just one such recipe. The ingredients just weren't something on hand, and it, they grow new water. They don't like sand. Pontifex returned to sleep with a heavy sigh before he could something caught his eye. He knew right away what the extra candle meant, he Slithers was here. He had never left. And as the creature drew himself forward, Pontifex suddenly found himself cornered. Which brings us to the end of this session review, and I'm guessing we're starting with combat round two. What? The end. That's okay! Awesome. I see you! <laughs> you know, we... Maybe we forgot to tell you the whole, like, we slightly increase quality <laughs> until it gets back around to Dennis, and then we go down the ship hosting dissension, and we were firmly on the dissension. Not you anymore. Doing what? it before Christmas and what March isn't posting? I told you I commit to the bits. <laughs> You know when you're on a roller coaster and you think you have gone like through the worst of it and then it goes right back up and then pick, picks up speed again and back down you go? Yeah, you're Where? right. That was terrible. This is the peak. No, this is awesome. <laughs> Can we try it again? That was amazing. Oh, Bravo. Thank amazing. you. Host the bad art. Happened Host the to, art. To cuddles. I'll, I'll post the art. Nothing bad. Here, I'll, I'll go back to that too. <laughs> Oh. Yes. I love how oh, Cuddles goodness. just looked so happy in that art piece you made. <laughs> Something that happened to her. Just like, just happy to be there. Yeah. This is my dad. Why Man. is that shooting my dad? A couple of weeks ago, I just finished playing Omori, and like this, this, this kind of animation like, immediately reminds me of it. Yeah. I think, oh. I'm hurt. I'm still hurt. I'm still recovering. Play the game if you haven't. <laughs> I almost missed it. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Jory. You're welcome. This, uh, oh. I'm going to... Boop, boop, boop. What's that? Ah, uh, close. Uh, uh, uh. Sometimes... You know, I've been using computer for, computers for years, but sometimes I forget how to use a mouse. <laughs> uh, here is okay. your... Ah, uh, cuddle spiration. Oh. So that nothing bad may happen to you. Yay. Just like cuddles. <laughs> Just like cuddles. Uh, there is only one thing that uh, I must correct you on. Um, and it is not your fault, because of course you would make that assumption, but today we are not starting with combat round two. I did say it was a guess. It was a, it was a good guess. It was a close <laughs> guess. Uh, Covered herself in the poetry. Yeah. <laughs> today we are starting uh, with a leap into the past. Close your eyes. Forget all about his lithers. Uh, forget about the tower, your journey, the, the machines of warm that are waiting for you outside the tower, unaware of what you guys are going through right now. Forget about Pip's situation and think back instead to Tekka. Tekka, at this moment in time, you find yourself bathed 
in a blue light. The brilliant projection of a cube, about twice your height, floats and spins a few feet away from you, magically suspended above a stone platform. Its light fills the area you're in, a large circular room, two stories tall, its walls covered in shelves, stacks of books and curious contraptions that you're unfamiliar with. The cube's faces are covered in magical runes that pulsate and breathe with a life of their own. The more you look at this shape, the more you think you're seeing something in it, or perhaps through it. Blurry masses of color swirl together, then separate, and then take more distinct forms and then break apart again. Before the cube, you see a tall, slender figure, draped in flowing silks that seem to shift and shimmer. His long white hair cascades down his back. You can make out his almost ethereal features, his skin bearing a pale hue of purple-blue, and his eyes the color of the sky on a sunny day. He exudes a sense of mystery, an air of other otherworldliness that sets your nerves on edge. Though his facial features are soft and delicate, they seem to have a supernatural quality to them, as if too perfect to be real. He moves with a fluid grace, each step around this cube is slow and deliberate, as if navigating a world that is beneath his notice, and yet he does so without a hint of pride or arrogance. His posture is impeccable, standing tall and straight, giving him a, an almost a regal bearing. He possesses a calm, cool neutrality, and you cannot discern any emotions on his face, but despite his quiet demeanor, or perhaps because of it, there is an unsettling aura about this being. The stranger addresses you. Godling, we meet again. Watch. I have so many visitors today, but none of them linger like you do. And you see them. All around you, people appear out of thin air. Uh, not people that you know, but people that you were just with. The armored guards. The Krelko of Narashk. They show up, they look around, their faces are distorted with fear and confusion, and in a matter of seconds... They disappear, reduced to dust that swirls up and is swallowed by the cube. And this happens over and over as more and more people die and come here and leave. Before you can do anything, it's as if someone just pulled the carpet from beneath your feet. And instead of you leaving this area and... Uh, breathing again in the real world, it's as if the world is leaving you. And you are left behind, realizing the implication. You plunge in darkness. Now back the, to the others. Um... Pontifex. No, can, can we can we go back? <laughs> <laughs> I like what was happening over there more than what's, what's happening over here. There is Somehow. nothing to go back to. There is only darkness. Oh, no. There's only now. Help. And boop. Oh. Yeah. Let's see if I can place this. Nice. Uh -oh. da -da -da -da. Bring the grid back in. Like that. Uh, this will do. All right. So, um, Pontifex, you are face-to-face -face with its slithers through dust. 
You stand inches away from its massive, round mouth, filled with row upon row of jagged teeth. Its four powerful arms are tipped with razor-sharp claws that cling to the wall of the room and dig effortlessly into the floor. His wild, fur-like mane sways after his sudden appearance, but then settles and both of you are still for just a moment. Your mind is filled with hostility, not just your own, but his, too. And within moments, you are filled with this disorientation. A wave of confusion washes over you, leaving your thoughts muddled and your senses scrambled. The creature's very presence twists your thoughts as they tumble over each other in disarray, though your senses of self-preservation prevail and... You prepare for combat. Everyone roll for initiative again. Austin, uh, Pip is not part of this fight, but Squeak is, so please roll Squeak. for him too. <clears throat> do, 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 uh, boop. We numbered the rooms last time. Uh, because they are in the order, like, from uh, bottom to top. Uh, so, for those of you who are in the kitchen, which is the ground floor, there is uh, the office between you and the bathroom. Well, thank you for the picture, Jory. Welcome. Yeah, it's beautiful. I would appreciate. I I really like the, the rhymes. Do, do you have Do you have the text? I do. I'll just. Share no, that was all just off the dome. I mean, it <laughs> was went. it was a test for it. You know, that was freestyle. <laughs> I guess I could throw something together. Could you also share the little chibi pip? I want to make him my icon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your new Discord avatar. Yeah, I'm I'm due for one. Yeah, I was pretty prepared for this session, but I have forgotten my dice. Hold on. I, I feel like I'll need them. Nah. Where did I put my dice roller? I found it! I did it. That is a beautiful lamprey mouth that you drew. Thank you. I don't know if beautiful is the word, but it's very well done. Thank yes. you. <laughs> it's hideous. Yeah. Thank you. It's beautifully hideous. That was so cute. I'll put all the assets. That's so cute. All the little transparent PNGs too. Oh. Yeah. It's like it, the, the scrolls no. looking good. Um, Ow. we're missing the Tressim. I guess <laughs> the game. Like a swaddled baby. <laughs> he is just a baby. <laughs> I just see like infant I imagine his entire body is inside of this blanket. <laughs> it's just a little infant. <laughs> squeak. Squeak is it indeed is blue. Uncle squeak. Yeah. So I, I don't I remember what color he was. So I just went off the fact that nice. I thought his token was it's teal. It's true. You He's got it right. Blue. Okay, excellent. Um, the put put a number in Pip's initiative because otherwise uh, uh, the uh, what game number? is unhappy. Any number? A any number. We'll skip him. Okay. Yeah, we we normally we'd move him out of the map, but I, uh, I guess I, I can't. Went I there. can't even oh. <laughs> get it. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. Oh, forgot about the trap. Indeed, the cat is in this. Yeah. Uh. Where initiative? Wow. Damn, fast kitty. So that was that was actually me rolling my my attack roll in advance. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh wait, that's the mod. Mm. There, wonderful. Uh, I don't know why it started from the bottom. <laughs> it just is first. Okay. Um. 
Do we have everything? I think so. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. We're good to go. Um, then we're going to start with Virion. Uh, you guys down in the kitchen have heard just a sudden commotion a few floors above you. Uh, the sound of things getting knocked over. Uh, Pontifex shouting something, speaking at someone other than you. Um, something is going on. Oh. Virion, wh what would you like to do? Uh, so Virion from where she was busy still like tearing the kitchen apart looking for potion ingredients. Mm -hmm. Um... She's just gonna like perk up and then just dash towards, well, not dash dash, but head towards the ladder here. Make it up 15. the ladder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, looking up, is the door up there open? Is it been closed? The trap doors are all open. Okay. Right now, all the way up to like the, the, the top floor. Okay, so. Can we see like what's what's going on? Like, is there, like, movement that she can see this, like, um, hey, this is definitely hmm. going on two floors up, or... I think straight up, considering where the... like, the corner where the, the trapdoors and the ladders are, uh, I think you would just have an unobstructed view. So it would be okay. more about what you're hearing, and you definitely have heard the Pontifex. Oh, I don't remember the exact wording, but he, he was complaining about him being... about something being in the bathroom. Okay. Uh... uh so in that case, how far up is it to the bathroom from uh, the It's floor? 10 feet for every floor. So okay. 10 to get to the to the one above and 20 to get to the one above that. Uh, which would be... Uh, climbing, unless you have a climb suite, it would be difficult terrain. So it would take twice as much. That's fine. Uh, Viren will look up and then just poof. And uh, blessing of the, the wolf and just... Oh yeah, she to, poof. Yeah, she poof. Up to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So, like, just still on the ladder, just you know. It's it, it, it's kind of a, it's kind of a strange feeling, just moving straight up like that, uh, where you're you're clinging to the ladder before and after, but the room you're in completely changes. Uh, and uh, um, the up here, the reason for the commotion is quite clear. Let me put yep. this uh, uh, on the two tiles here, hoping... Okay, yeah, because this would be the squares that it occupies. Yeah. Alright. I suppose I can bring it downward. Yeah. Cool, oh, love that for me. Uh, love being so close. Uh, do I do I get the, uh, the bad thing from being right it, next to it him? It wouldn't or? be five feet from the Okay. Ladder. Here you go. Okay, cool. That's better. Uh, so, basically, as she poofs up, she already has her her gun out, expecting you know problems, and just still hanging on the ladder, just turns around and fires off a shot. Okay. And is our roll again? My attack. This is very cinematic. Just clinging yes. to the ladder for uh, with with one arm and with the other just turning around your body and you take aim and this thing is quite large and so your projectile hits this is this is her home turf shooting off a hanging on something like this yeah yeah this is home this is just effortless for you yes uh so i, so I remember where my it's been three weeks <laughs> and the, the, my special sneak attack uh within 30 feet a creature okay go yeah, if I'm within 30 feet of it, no other creatures are within 5 feet of me, and I don't have disadvantage. Cool, so sneak attack. Ta-da! Da Oop. This is the part where I realize I left my whiteboard on the other side of the room. <laughs> I'm so sorry, hold on, I need to pick it up. I have returned. Woo. Apologies. You're fine. 14. 14. Damage. And then she's gonna hop off the ladder and clear room. Just, we've got trouble. Mm-hmm. 
uh, your bullet hits his leathers. Um, for you, despite wh where you, uh, despite you clinging to the letter, for you, it is such a simple shot to take. Uh, and it makes contact, and um, I, I, once more, you, you, you perceive, you feel what he feels, and you just feel this sharp pain shooting through your own body as if you were the one who was just targeted. You, you don't, uh, you're not actually injured, uh, you just mirror the pain of uh, his leathers through dust. Is that the end of your turn? That is the end of my turn. What would the kitty like to do? Uh, cats, uh, gonna lose her mind uh, and is going to uh, fly over into Brooke's face. Because uh, Brooke is, he's not a statue anymore, right? Nope. Yeah, the, uh, you're gonna fly up to your face, uh, squawk as a cat does, uh, <laughs> and like flare its wings everywhere, just feathers everywhere, and then just bolt up to the next floor. <laughs> Brooke, oh. you have a few fresh scratches on your face now. Yeah, the cat squawk. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> cat squawk. Yeah. Uh, and then it's gonna bolt upstairs and end up. That very, very here. pleasant sound of when there's like cats outside your ha of your house that are fighting. Uh, yeah, cat, cat here, uh, and cat dodge action. Okay. Is the cat uh, small or tiny? Uh, I think it's tiny. I don't think the cat is the size of Pip, but I could be wrong. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I do believe it's okay. Perfect. So, um, Nobody would have any trouble like moving through the light yeah, or yeah, yeah. easier. Uh, okay. And the the cat will be, we'll say, flying, you know, ten feet up or whatever, like up mm -hmm. towards the ceiling. That works. Uh, so the cat has a good view of what's about to happen next. Uh, Guess who had a short rest? No. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, let's try. Let's try this one. Uh, Pontifex, you being just directly ahead of this creature, uh, you watch as one of its too many arms reaches not for you, but inside its own mouth way too deep it's just uncomfortably so and uh, from somewhere within its own body it produces a book and holds it open in front of itself and this creature casts a spell everybody in this area and uh Brooke, let me let me do some math how far are you from it uh, Very this far. much, plus this much. I think you're like just outside of it. Oh god. Radius, vertical. I think you're out of it. Uh, needs to roll a DC 17 wisdom saving throw. Um, oh, Viren, you don't have to. Oh. Oh. Uh, so me and. So is this you and a cat? <laughs> It doesn't know. Nope. Cat fur. This is cat. Cat nine. Cat and like then... like her lives. Yeah. Do Tressim also have and nine lives? I you'd think so. I feel like since it's like an angel cat, it maybe like use them up to get there. <laughs> oh no! Right, and this is me. Oh, yes. Easy. Okay. There is a bit of a wave of tiredness that washes over you, which makes sense. You haven't exactly had a full night's sleep yet. Um, but the adrenaline that's coursing through you is a little too strong for, for anything to, to come of it. Uh, Viren, you feel nothing. Uh, the Trasim, though takes a nap and she was flying <laughs> yeah. above the trapdoor 
Yeah. So. It's <laughs> <laughs> like lands on the door. <laughs> the cat flops to the ground with a squawk. Uh, uh, yeah, I think she's gonna just fall, uh, fall all the way down to the kitchen. Oh, um, oh. The trap doors are open. Uh, so that's a. Uh, that's a 20 foot fall. Which means it's 1d6 oh. for 10 feet, right? Uh, yep. Oh, There's a very low chance. Uh, that, oh no, I never rolled really high. That would be 11 points of no, damage no, she, from the fall. Oof. Oh, so, uh, squeak <laughs> and <Wow>. Bamiya. <laughs> would you see to <laughs> Uh, this. <laughs> Oh no! Viren, Viren runs for the ladder and climbs up, and seconds later, a cat plummets down the same ladder and hits the ground, and poof, there's feathers that fly everywhere and some fur that scatters. Brooke, a cat flies in your face, squawks, yes. bolts up the thing, and then immediately comes plummeting back down and down through the floor to the place below you with a loud thump. I think that means don't go up there. Thanks for warning me. <laughs> oh my god, today we have thing killed. That happened today. <laughs> it's only funny because it's not a real cat. First the dog and then the cat. Why are they the victims? Because they don't have enough hit points. <clears throat> True. <laughs> oh. Get good. Yeah. Um, and with with the spell having failed on you. Uh, it is going, he is going to, um, t -t can you do that? Yes, he can. One. Uh, he's going to attempt to claw at you, Pontifex. Okay. Uh, my AC is 20. Just let me know if it hits. Don't say the number. I am doubtful. Nope, he does not. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, you are in, uh, this, this is your lair, Pontifex. <laughs> uh, despite the surprise, despite this you thing being faster than you. Oh, my uh, spot? <laughs> Try to mess with my head again? No. <laughs> you just duck. Uh, your body is long since its prime, but this was just an easy blow to dodge for you. I think as the Tresum plummets down, Pontifex like instinctively turns and like leans forward like, oh no, like tries to catch the cat and in leaning forward, ducks the claw. <laughs> I didn't even see Do it coming. <laughs> Do you mind? <laughs> okay, that brings us to Pontifex, who at the beginning of his turn, um, uh -huh is under this effect. I need to roll a d10. I can feel the sneeze coming. <laughs> oh, no, it didn't. <clears> Hoi, <throat> 10. That's ten. probably fun. You can act normally on your turn. Oh, no. You, 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 <laughs> it's either really good or really bad. You, you're, it's a, you can feel this, this confusion in you. Your mind is clouded, but your mind is also your your strongest asset uh, you just your thoughts push past the fog uh, you are focused allow me to remind you why this is a mistake uh, it needs to make a DC 16 int save natural 20 oh no <laughs> <laughs> we'll Talk do this again. again in 6 seconds Probably. For the record, it's a 29 total. Oh. Oh, you, you're very smart. <laughs> <laughs> you're not <laughs> as stupid as I thought. <laughs> Perhaps it's the language barrier, or you're, you can perceive his mind almost uh, as clearly as you can see its, his body ahead of you, and you can feel the vastness of it. <laughs> Uh, this Warm is wizard. a wizard against wizard fight. <laughs> Warm wizard. Uh, okay, let me, let me check my new thing. Does this work? Oh, it does! Pontifex, I need you to roll an intelligence save. Oh? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Okay, this is against oh, your own uh, DC. Oh, wait, it's way higher than that. Okay. Your, your DC, I think wait, you no, said, was not. 16, right? 
so you're uh, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, DC 16. Um, what were you casting? Uh, this is Mind Whip. Okay, um, so describe what it looks like, but like the the moment it's about to hit his lithers, it's bent back towards you. Cool. Uh, yeah, I think I think his version of Mind Whip is less of a visual whip, and it's more just like the you know the 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 fingers to the temples, try to like blow things heads up. Uh, like just the the mental assault, and I think he just gets like really really bad feedback, which you know doesn't work. But <laughs> yeah, you you you, it, you just feel that that it's your own energy. It's like he tries to join to to, or to join he slithers on like a Zoom call, but slithers has like a really <laughs> bad microphone, with, like a bunch of background noise, <laughs> like a screaming child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It doesn't hurt fingers. me, but it's unpleasant all the same. Yeah, you mute him. Not worth it. <laughs> I gouge Any out my own ears. <laughs> Anything else on your turn? Uh, 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 to make room for others, uh, probably. This is this is a tactical maneuver called into the tub. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Uh, and nice. Um, because of the size of the of the tub, uh, you 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 will be still within five feet of it. Uh, but yeah, you you just hop into it, tumble inside the tub. <laughs> You're yeah, even more in your layer domain. now. Yes. Because the tub still has water in it. That's what Pot Effects is doing. So there is water in it right now. Yeah, yeah. That's what Pot Effects <laughs> is doing. Remember, like when they went this. Thing <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Came at him. That's yeah. This thing is like, it's weak to water. It's a desert thing. He just splashes in there with all of his gear on. He's like, oh, yeah, it's all dirty mouse. It's like the, a comforting thing. This is my teddy bear. Devami, a lot had just happened in a few seconds. He heard Pontifex's voice shouting a few a few floors above. You saw, you saw Virion cling to the ladder, and instead of climbing it, she just vanished. And moments later, the Tressim just plummeted down and hit the floor and also vanished. Uh, all also before, <laughs> yes, and all before the frozen eyes of Pip, who is facing the ladder. <laughs> Who's looking on, unfazed. <laughs> Listen, we can leave right now. <laughs> we can just walk out that door. Go on our own adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you didn't hear nothing, I ain't heard nothing. <laughs> <sighs> now a quiet moment, you guys, huh? And yeah, Dwellmore's just gonna start climbing up the ladder uh, with an adrenaline rush, just rushing up the ladder as a bonus action. So mm -hmm. it's still make an attack happen. Uh, oh, nice. Where is it again? I, I, I lost the dance. <laughs> and after 400 you. feet of movement. <laughs> and uh, the thing, a horrible thing happens. You burst into the bathroom while Pontifex is bathing. Oh, no. <laughs> Instinctively blind yourself. In armor. Yeah, the moment I had planned to shoot an arrow, but yeah, not uh, not able to focus. She's going to throw a hand axe. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Instead. Just toss an axe. Yeah, <laughs> it's all gonna hit. It's a big target, you know. Uh, so let's see here if that hits. Uh, 13 does not. Alright, that ha had axe. I don't hope it doesn't hit anything bad. Yeah, the, the, the axe flies <laughs> past it. This this uh, this uh, coiling body basically went right in the middle where it was twisted up, um, and hits the mirror that's on the wall and shatters it. Oh it no! Mirror shards flying everywhere. You're glad you're not barefoot. <laughs> Fair. All right, that is end of turn. I think she's not barefoot. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, no, she, she has boots. She has boots. Uh, squeak. Uh, all right. Sleep tight, sweet prince. <laughs> He's going to fly up the ladder. See what's going on. 
So, question. Um, is this a new day as far as magic missiles is concerned? Ooh. Okay, let me let me think how many hours have passed. So I was able to long rest um, at some point. Okay, so at least this. four hours. And I know you have spent... Uh, um, the four hours, it was after the first encounter with him, right? Yes. Okay, so... Because uh, that, that, that they gave the time to Brook to unpetrify, because I'm pretty sure... He, he hasn't used it since the fight with the, the drippers. Mm. I'm trying to figure out if it's Dawn. Did I tell you that it recharges at Dawn? Mm, just says one per day. Ish. Okay, look, I'm giving it to you today because I was unclear. Uh, but okay. uh, from from like this session onward, it reach like it, it's supposed to recharge at dawn. I will make note. Um, of that. It's it's Squeak has to make them basically basically has to like re um like make make shift make shift the projectiles for it is the idea. Yeah. Uh, so yes, at the time, let's go with it. But from now on, we're uh, after it will be at dawn. Okay. Um. Pew pew. Ah! Uh, <laughs> what, what are you trying attack. to do? <laughs> uh, pew pew pew. <laughs> <laughs> they hit, obviously. <laughs> Squeak being a lot more accurate than the Vamia. <laughs> For ten points of force damage. Okay, it's uh, yeah. The, the 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 each of these little missiles they go pew pew pew, pew, pew uh, leaving little holes across uh, uh, his entire body. Squeak also feeling like he just got hit by them. Uh, he feels like a few of these projectiles would easily. And gravely wound him. Uh, he feels uh, that pain, but he isn't ow, ow, ow. actually injured. It's just uncomfortable. He fires them as he's swooping uh, straight into this basket. Uh -uh. Just covers himself. Um. Okay. He moves within five feet of it. Um. Yeah. <laughs> me uh, roll a d10 for me. Okay. Squeak dive bombs into the basket of dirty clothes that Pontifex was just wearing. Nine. Uh, and he's fine. <laughs> just a little stinky in here. Hey, Brook. <laughs> I don't think I can do anything else except for running up. Hello. <laughs> 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 Alright, he better get it. Oh. What a what a tight space this ended up being. Yeah. I'm going to move the wall just for our own sanity. Uh so you we arrive on the letter, you're dashing, right? To to, to get up, I think. Because it was twenty five feet of movement just to get to the ladder and then you have to double the climb distance hello mm, <laughs> i can i can dash though right you can yes 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 and then i would be here okay uh the moment you arrive in this spot i'll need a d10 roll from oh. you sure mm. Mm. Guys, what? stop it! Is... No. Stop it! Nice. Wow, you're all you you are all strong willed. Partially because you've already felt uh, what it is like. You you just steal your mind, you step close to this, and you can feel your thoughts getting jumbled up, but you are driven. Step here and you're ready for action. Although is that the end of your turn? Or do you have something as a bonus action? Mm, I don't. Okay. You said you wanted to move to this spot? 
Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, skip, Bip, Therion. All right. Uh, gonna take another another shot. Uh, there's my dice. There's my dice. A twenty-one hits. All right. Do not get sneak attack on this one since the bomb is right here, which is fine. <laughs> you you don't like her being next to you? I mean, it just kind of messes with my vibe, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, you shoot, you you feel that sharp pain on your side as the bullet pierces through his lithers through dust. Um, and he is in agony. The projectile goes right through its body and ends up like... Uh, it, you hear the clanging of it as it, it falls somewhere in the bathtub next to Pontifex. Uh, does everyone feel that or just Virian? The pain from that shot, you feel it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you just like see her wince a little bit. She's like, he, he's hurt. He's hurt pretty bad. Um, and then she'll open this door. And uh, just kind of scoot to the other side to clear up a little space in here. Mm -hmm. This, uh, um, you, as you can imagine, I, this was not designed for combat. Yeah, uh... that's fine. Alright, this is how doors open, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those doors. Oh, so hey, a new prankster. <laughs> Only you would make swivel doors. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just, there just to let people get through, in case they want to. Okay. I'm going to and just give be... you a tiny bit of space here and go with the yeah. walls. That's fine. <clears throat> I believe that is... My turn. Hey! Ah, uh, to me. What do we got? What's left? What haven't? Uh, uh, what's what has more users done? 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 Uh, how does this work? Ah, it's a bad environment for it. Why is this place so crowded? Um. Uh, okay. Do -do 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 -do. All right, that means it's time to uh, claw and bite. Uh, hey, can I have a little, like, <clears throat> for funsies, a little uh, stealth check from Squeak? Sure. Funsies. Well, I roll this. Uh, we're going to make it yeah. one, two, three. <laughs> <clears throat> we only roll tens. <laughs> Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Wow. That is literally one attack on each of the three of you. Aww. Um, I'm going to go in the order I rolled it. So the first one is on Squeak. Wait, how does this work? Uh, okay. So does a 22 hit Squeak? Yeah. Okay. Um, basically, what it does is it, one of its many arms just uh, um, ends up in the basket, pulls up the clothes, and somewhere in that bundle there is uh, just a... Uh, uh, people can see it moving, a squeak is like in the middle of it. Uh, his, uh, his own claws and tail are like stuck in them. Uh, oh. And uh, uh, he slithers, puts the entire thing in his mouth. Um, Squeak will take uh, uh, 11 points of slashing damage. He's resistant. Good, so it's five. I guess. Um, <laughs> and and then his leathers just spits out the whole thing. Uh, Squeak, you're back in the basket. <laughs> oh shit, oh, no, I dropped my d20. That doesn't count. Uh, the second one is on Pontifex, which is a 21 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. Um, disliking the flavor uh, oh, of sorry. squeak. I would um, my have uh, I forgot my staff of defense, so shield. Oh, disliking the taste of squeak. Uh, he slithers, uh, shifts around, and goes to uh to bite you instead. And it seems just set on taking your whole head off, but bumps against this force that emanates from your staff. 
Uh, and frustrated goes for Brook. Uh, 22 to hit. It hits. It rolls. Wait, no, that's correct. Sorry. It is, um, but it's not with the bite, it's with its arms. And it's a different die. Uh, 12 points of uh, bludgeoning damage as it, it sort of like smacks you with the back of its hand. Um, you are automatically grappled. It is holding you <laughs> tight. Um, <laughs> slams you against the wall, you hit it with your back and then just grabs you with another hand and it's spinning you against the wall. Uh, Pontifex. Start with a D10. Uh, uh, yes, of course. Eight. Um. Okay, on an eight, <clears throat> the the adrenaline is keeping you going, and perhaps it's a, a kicking in a little bit too hard, and you're like in full on. Um, survival mode uh, and instinctively you lash at pretty much anything that's within your reach which is just his slithers your action is spent performing a melee attack against him <laughs> okay <laughs> great uh, yup let's, let's smack a plus one your stuff is pointy Do I have... Am I flanking with Squeak? <laughs> sure. <laughs> we take those. <laughs> what do we take those? I've leveled what? up. I can flank with me now. <laughs> I've never smacked something before. Maybe this is the way. <laughs> Perhaps it is the sheer size of his slithers. It's not very difficult to hit it, and it's like right now in the process of holding down Brook and just pet out Squeak. And so it's it's sort of its attention is away from you, and you you just poke it. What's the damage? It's, poop. <laughs> I don't know. it's got a big minus on it, so it might still be zero. <laughs> <Why not? laughs> Uh, I am holding a shield, so it's one-handed. So, on a crit, 2d6 minus 2. <laughs> it could be zero. It could be the worst could crit be... ever. <laughs> oh, double sixes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Maximum damage. <laughs> <laughs> the adrenaline was real. Does this do anything with Jory's class? You're too far away. I just, I was just looking. Oh, no. Yeah. Aww. This is the one it's, time in history. Yeah, that was, it's 20 feet. <laughs> it would be so dope. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, you... you... Pontifex, wham! Uh, this is magical, <laughs> if it matters. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, uh, was Pontifex the kind of, prof of professor who would, like, smack the hands of students if they misbehaved? <laughs> I think so, but more with like a mage your hand. channeling? <laughs> okay. I don't know if he's to physically abuse his students. I think That's he's fair. the emotionally abuse people. Aww. Yeah. Um, but for a moment, it feels like you have tapped into an alternate timeline where you did not become a wizard. And you Get wield this staff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm whack. <laughs> You still have your movement and bonus action that you are free to take as you wish. Uh, I think Pontifex is not willing to back down. He is his mama hen protecting his <laughs> bathtub. <laughs> this uh, is my going turf. Nowhere. Uh, okay. Well, maybe I have a bonus action. Let me look. Uh, I do. Oh? oh, I can do this. I forget. I'm like super <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to cast Healing Word on Brooke, thus allowing Brooke to make a weapon attack. Let's go! Uh, this is my word of authority. Oh, yeah! It hasn't happened yes. in a while. Uh, you roll your attack, uh, and I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll attack, roll a heal. Attack, attack, Okay, okay. Oh, 
Oh, I keep rolling the max dice. <laughs> Does a 12 hit? No, but you do heal for 7. Let's go. Uh, so, Brook... Uh... I also have a... Yeah. Oh, what, what is it? Uh, since I just saw that on my... Oh, that on my D&D Beyond sheet, I'm, at, I'm supposed to have 60 max HP. I'm assuming I didn't update the mini, or did we not sleep through the level up yet? We did, right? Uh, yeah, because you leveled up. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. <clears throat> well, that... Wait, what level are we? Seven. Seven, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm so, level seven, so. Uh, uh, Pontifex, so for, for, for a moment you just felt this compulsion to strike with the staff, and it turns out you're quite good at it. Um, and your mind clears enough to remember that usually what you do is cast spells, and you proceed to do so. There is this sharp pain on your side where it feels almost like you accidentally stabbed yourself with, with the staff. Uh, and, and Brook, uh, you are you are spurred by the sudden rush of energy uh, f uh, flowing through you. But uh, as you try to attack, you being pinned against the wall me 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 makes it a little bit difficult for you to actually reach for anything, and you fail to even hit the hand that's holding you down. Is that mm. everything from you from your turn, Pontifex? Uh, yeah. The uh, whenever I, I whap this thing, did I take damage? No, it just feels oh. you just feel his pain. Emotional damage. Mm -hmm, just emotional damage. No, this was very physical. Devamia. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, Devamia will first make a hunter's mark and then just start shooting. Let's go. Uh, let's see. Hunter's Mark uh, has no save, right? It is just placed. Yeah, it is just placed. Please. Okay, and a 22 does hit. All right. Uh, yeah, then Favored Foe also goes into effect, and then let's roll damage. I think you do add a plus four to this one, though, right? Yep. Yeah, 20 feet. Yes. Ninety. Damn. Wow. That, that's with an axe? Or... Uh, no, that's that's the bow. That's a bow, okay. Uh, <clears throat> 19. Uh, this much. Woo! Very good. Um... Uh, Devami actually just uh, immediately after letting go of the of the error, uh, he she knows uh, uh, that she hit some uh, important organ because uh, she feels it and almost uh, falls back against the wall just from the uh, the sheer pain that she feels coursing through her. And as it um, fades away eventually, and she makes sure that she's fine, she she knows that uh, uh, this was yeah very solid shot. You and have then, one more in you? One more. We're going for it. Uh, uh, just fighting through the pain. Seventeen. Seventeen hits. Oh no! Oh, oh sorry, I I rolled damage there. That was my mistake. That was oh my mistake. oh uh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. Yep. Yeah. It well, does not, does not. At all. Go go ahead yeah. and reroll that because you'll just hear Virian shout just no again again. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's reeling. And come at a uh, relentless assault. You can reroll that. Yeah. You, can't do so, you can't even see him. I can see her. <laughs> That's what matters. <laughs> That's <laughs> in the next room. <laughs> just back, hear from the, 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 the ultimate backseater. <laughs> 23 hits. <laughs> oh my god, incredible. Uh, okay, so let's make this for real this time. After some expert advice. <laughs> Shoot again. 
<laughs> Tactics. Exactly. Okay. Are you missing a die there from? Ah, uh, yeah, because it's only the first. No, because it's only the first time. Uh, but the favorite foe, it's only the first time on the turn that you can add that die. Oh, okay. I see. Uh, so an extra fifteen, which brings the total to this. Um, and uh, you feel the pain be mirrored back at you, and uh, uh, the creature just recoils in pain. Okay, that's done. Uh, anything else from you? That'll be all. Okay, well, the Squeak just got eaten and then spat back out because yeah. he tastes disgusting. Does he need to roll a d10? Yes. Oh. Oh, sorry. Ten. How? <laughs> How? It's the devil's own luck, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Proceed um, with your turn. All right. Well, we've established that he's flanking with Professor P. <laughs> yes. So it's Professor one P big poison. stinker attack coming up. Uh, uh, Stinger out just lunges forward. Ah! Oh, and misses. Ah. <laughs> um, it's probably more of a hit, but like the, the stinger on, on this one particular spot of the body that he managed to hit. <laughs> ding. Um, yeah, I think doesn't quite penetrate. Mm. Back yep. in the basket? Back in the basket. <laughs> Back in the basket. <laughs> uh, Brooke, D10. Okay. Two. Two. Um, the disorientation from being this close to his slithers, uh, it just overwhelms you. Your mind reels back, your thoughts are jumbled. Um, you're not quite sure where you are or what you're doing. The last thing you remember, just vaguely, you remember thrashing around and trying to hit this thing with your sword and missing. And uh, time is dilating around you. Uh, unfortunately, you can't take actions on this turn and uh that that will be it all right but <laughs> very on all right only be... on my turn or also on the other turns for the round for specifically your like turn still take reactions so <laughs> yeah okay. it, reactions i'm going to allow them okay uh, it's gonna, we're gonna shoot it again. Seems to be doing pretty good. Mm hmm. Uh, Not yeah, another 13. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. And then since nobody else seems to want to leave, we're just gonna stay put. Okay. Yeah, you look around a corner. Yeah. Uh, you, you just put out your arm just to shoot, but from, from that angle, you end up uh, surprisingly missing despite the size. Uh, <laughs> Of the creature, and then you decide. Well, we'll stay here. Let's let's soak in Devamia's vibes. Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, he's lithers. How many times per day do we can we do this? Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't really chain it with that. So I guess it's going to be this. All right. Um, the arm, the hand that is holding a uh, uh, the book uh, flips to a different page. Uh, there is this, uh, not really a voice, because it's more in your heads that you hear this, uh, but something that resembles a speech, uh, garbled and alien. Uh, and then the room is plunged in impenetrable darkness. Um, those of you with dark vision can't see through it. Unless, I suppose, is Squeak? Squeak yeah. can. Squeak can. Um, 
Squeak just perceived the, the, the sudden shift in the hues where everything is like desaturated all of a sudden. Um, and he can see uh, that he slithers then proceeds with one of his uh, uh, free arms uh, to slap Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey. Uh, Brooke, you don't have a way of seeing through magical darkness, right? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. yet. <laughs> <laughs> so this will be at advantage, uh, which makes it a 21 to hit again. Yeah, it's... Uh, 7, 10, 12 points of slashing damage. Uh, Pontifex, D10! Here we go. Seven. Uh, why did it not show up in the chat log? What? Uh, it might weird. still be vibrating. Oh, it's vibrating. Okay. No, it is. It is uh, sh shaking, but seven. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Uh, yeah, on a seven. Where's the page? Where did I... Oh, no. Did I close it? <laughs> oh, it's right here. Um, <laughs> seven means you stab it. Again? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you are doing what Brooke isn't. Okay, so plus one. Uh, you don't anything? have a way of seeing through magical darkness, right? Oh, yeah, so disadvantage. So, it's at, uh, so it would um, just be this. Well, it's a straight roll, so it's a seven, so eight to hit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know he's somewhere ahead of you. You can kind of perceive his presence in your mind, just the size of it. Um, and so you wave your stick around ahead of you. You don't touch anything. <laughs> You're left with a bonus section if you'd like to do something. I'm just so angry. <laughs> uh, I don't I think these things require me to see the target. Let me double check. Uh, that I can see. So, not that one. Uh, oh, I can do this. This does not require a target I can see. A creature within range, that's all. Perfect. Uh, so I will do that. I will cast... This is kind of a silly way to use it, but... Uh, I will cast Sanctuary uh, <laughs> again on Brook. Uh, you can either attack and immediately lose the sanctuary, <laughs> or you can keep the sanctuary. What? Up to you. <clears throat> what does the sanctuary do again? Uh, anytime it tries to attack, uh, it has to make a wisdom save. Uh, and if it fails, it must choose a new target or lose the attack. So, if it tries to attack you, it makes a save. If it fails, it has to attack me or squeak. You know what? It should probably attack me. I'll attack! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it literally <laughs> lose the sanctuary. Brooke, your mind <laughs> clears this long enough chance. to feel this, like, sense of peace. Like, fighting is not really necessary. And then you just wail around and you try to hit in the dark. <laughs> it will be a disadvantage because you can't see. Oh god! So just give me one more I roll, believe. we'll take the lowest. <laughs> 18 hits? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, 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 okay. Brooke, if you can hear me, everything is going to be fine. Oh my god, I, I have dropped my dice for the second time. As long as you time. don't attack it. Did I cut off the hand? I have successfully lost my dice somewhere under the bed. <laughs> oh, Barbara. I, I will have to pick it up later and I have to remember to do it before the cats get to it. <laughs> uh, oh no, I guess you can only roll d12s now. Oh well. Oh well. I, I have plenty more. This is why I have an entire bag of them. <laughs> Alright. The damage is 9. And the reason why I was rolling a d20 is for concentrate. No fucking... Sorry, didn't mean to swear. It's a natural <laughs> one. Darkness is gone. <laughs> this die sucks. <laughs> yeah, baby. That's no. And 
bully. It. L uh, I just cast it. <laughs> hey, oh yeah, isn't that horrible? Welcome to being a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> nice swing, I saw that whole thing. You know, I can see in magical darkness. Yeah, I'm pretty cool. It doesn't matter now, though. <laughs> well, um, yeah. <laughs> I forget I can cast this on Squeak and let him fight, too. <laughs> <laughs> You're next, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I uh, that's, yep. Yeah, Pontifex is at the end of your turn. Yeah, because yeah, okay. it's my action to smack it, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, he's so, not leaving this tub. Yeah, but Brooke, um, you couldn't see, but it was one arm pinning you to the wall. And so you just swing straight up, but directly ahead of you. And you make contact with his hand and you almost just remove it entirely. You cut halfway through it. You can feel the uh, your blade grinding against bone. Uh, the, uh, the pain is... Horrible, but you push through it and suddenly you can see. And we're here. Yep. Divanya, your turn. Um it felt like you blinked for a little bit too long, but now you can see. Uh yeah, Devamia is gonna turn uh, is gonna close the trap door and then stand on top of it because I don't want this thing to leave again. If <laughs> you just, yeah, possible. you just kick it closed. Yeah. Uh, and then let's start shooting again. I hope this track um, one at a time. Let's see. Twenty-five hits. All right, all right. Did Brooke add the damage from Virion? Is he close enough? Yeah. Dennis, was that included? Mm, nope. What is it, an extra four? Yes. So it would have been a 13. Uh, got it. Okay, and the Vamia, you just hit for tw 22! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at her go. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second one does not hit. All right, that's fine. You know, hit, hit him again. <laughs> hit him again. Oh, okay. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just hit him again. I told you to hit him. <laughs> <laughs> not like that. <laughs> not like that. <laughs> uh, so one incredible shot, and then two arrows that. Just fly past Pontifex. Whoa. Um, hey, watch the top. <laughs> <laughs> they, they pierce through the curtain. It's kind of ruined now. <laughs> we can do this without collateral damage. Or, like, we can take this downstairs. <laughs> Not here. <laughs> anything, anything else? Okay. <laughs> Squeak. Yeah. Uh, eight. Da, 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 da. Eight means. I just smack him. Yes, you smack him. That's uh, what I was gonna do no. anyway. No. Because there's also Virion. So roll a d2. Oh. Oh, uh, no. We're gonna flip a coin and we'll see if you hit uh, one. It's his leaders and two is Virion. Okay. Can I have a coin or do you want me to? Uh, just. Uh, yeah, or, sorry, uh, you can do a d4 and we, we can do even an odd. Um, whichever. Sorry. I could. Wait, I think I do have coins. Would you like a coin? <laughs> yeah. We never have coins I'd in here. I love a coin. Yeah? Components. Ah, oh, look, you can have a quarter. Roll a d2. Nice. All right, whose heads, whose tails? Heads is uh, his leathers. Oh, it's like a straight up quarter. It's a 1942 quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Damn it. <laughs> All right. Is it just a, a sting attack? That's the only melee attack Squeak has. Uh, yeah, it's a, a melee attack, so go for it. Okay. With advantage? <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. It all worked out. Huh? <laughs> there was a lot of effort to let you take your turn normally. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to be outdone by a freaking frog. 24. 24. 24 hits. Okay. So, 
d4 plus 7 and if it if it doesn't does it, how does it feel about poison does it have any particular feelings about poison mm, no it no he's neutral about it constitution saving throw <clears throat> okay the total is 20 oh he's fine <laughs> Oh, wait. That yeah. still takes half. Oh. Uh, six. Okay, Squeak very much like Pontifex results, uh, resorts to poking. Uh, he got turned around a little bit after being spat out um, and almost attacked Virion, but they managed to... to more out of luck than out of skill. Uh, just sort of ended up <laughs> tumbling in midair and uh, stung the biggest thing nearby. Yeah, take that! Squeak's um... gonna actually hide underneath this shelf. <laughs> just in there. Oh, <laughs> he fits right in! Yeah. The, Look the at basket him. What a... got too what a nice... conspicuous. He, he looks like a decoration, just straight yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> just stands there like a statue. <laughs> Maybe one now. Uh, I'm a sculpted bar of soap. <laughs> oh my god, I'm muted again. Do I roll 10? Yes. Uh. <laughs> uh, oh. It's the first one, it's a three. Okay, I want a three. I rolled Oh. I'm 20, because it's like an advantage. Buddy, you're, you're skipping your turn again. No! <laughs> no <I'm around. laughs> you, every time a Pontifex encourages you, you find the strength to strike back, <laughs> but then you just slump back against the wall one more time. Sorry. Very on. All right, so first things first, seeing Devami, I kick the trap door closed. She's going to close this door here just to close off the other escape routes. Oh, God. <laughs> and Don't you know how much work sorry. this is? <laughs> I mean, yeah. use, use <laughs> <laughs> and then like as she's doing that, she's already a Kazla gun out taking aim, and we're going to mm. bonus action steady aim and take another shot. Ooh. So I get advantage. Uh... I'm gonna re-roll one of those because I'm an elf. Much better. That hits. Alright, and do, do, do my damage is right here. That's it. Eight. And that is the turn. Okay. Um, on your hit, um, he slithers, is howling in agony. You can feel it too. Uh, its massive body quivers and slams against the walls of the bathroom. And Brooke, you can feel his grip on you weakening. And yeah, then. Before everyone's eyes, he vanishes. Yeah, he vanishes. <laughs> 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 Took me a moment. To... Hey, okay. and we are temporarily out of initiative. And none of you feel the... Uh, you can feel the, the effects upon your mind just uh, um, fading away with every second until you're just back to your normal selves. Uh, Devamia has advantage on a wisdom survival check to follow its trail. Can that uh, be done? The hunter's mark, I think you just straight up know where it is. Okay, it doesn't say so here, but I believe you. Uh, 
Let me check. Oh, no, 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 you're right. It's the advantage on, on things to find it. You're right. Different spell where you just know where things are. That's mine, Spike. My mistake. Any wisdom or uh, any perception or survival check you make to find it. Okay. Uh, so you're looking for him? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, the Bamiya is indeed uh, adept at tracking uh, her prey. Uh, this is a little different because there is, like, nothing on the ground to follow. Uh, it didn't walk anywhere. It didn't uh, uh, fly anywhere. So what the Bamiya does is just she remains still for a moment and listens. Roll uh, your perception check. And it is indeed an advantage. Okay. Nice. <laughs> um, Important advantage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as, as everybody, as a, ooh, hmm, let me try that again. <laughs> as everyone is catching their breath, uh, Amia just calm listens. And somewhere in the tower, something just got knocked over. And it was faint, but she heard it. And it's somewhere downstairs. Yeah, the Devami would instantly open the trap door. And follow me. <laughs> and yeah. Okay. Uh, back in the uh, room where you first saw it, you could have sworn it was just somewhere right beneath you. But when you climb down the ladder and you look around, there is, well, everything seems normal. Severian's gonna follow and just see if she can tell if anything feels out of sorts from the last time she was up here. Mm -hmm. Is everyone coming? Yeah. Yep. One yep. checks too. All right. Oop. Um. So everybody can roll an investigation check. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Can I? Can I guidance myself on this? Uh, yeah, because you you know what you're doing. You just you prepare yourself for it, and yeah, let's go. Squeak is just gonna check on Pip real quick, make sure he wasn't eaten. Okay. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh my Do god. <laughs> what, do we, what do we see? <laughs> Last time I did this in the bathroom, I got attacked. <laughs> I just want you to know that the stealth roll I have rolled is a 21. So wow. there is uh, two of you who have at least one who has met it and one who has intensely beaten it. Um, the last time I rolled that hot on investigation, I found Pip some really sick rocks in a marketplace. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, Devamia still senses very sharp. Um, Pontifex, more, it is more about your own memory. Uh, there is one book among the many dozens and dozens, but just one that Pontifex, you don't remember being there. Devamia notices that the script on it is um it looks like the font, the letters that are on the other books in, in the common language of Plurina. Uh, but the, the letters are in this random order that don't actually make up a word. Um uh, both of you silently notice this and make eye contact and like just without saying anything you both know that you have found it me or you you uh yeah Pontifex is gonna like look around try to do it you know nonchalantly and then you know 
Yeah, everybody's scattering and looking around. <laughs> Wander like back here. Maybe like here. <laughs> like roll a performance check. Behind people. <laughs> roll a performance check for funsies. Oh, well, you know me and my charisma. <laughs> Uh, don't you know I have expertise? <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is, the rest of you can... <laughs> it's like the bad whistle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it <laughs> It's out of tune. Uh, you're, it, it almost feels like Pontifex has stopped looking around and is just distracted for some reason, just in his own mind. It is definitely not here in this room. We should, I should inspect this specific corner over here on the opposite <laughs> side of definitely nothing. Uh, and then can I mind whip the book? Yes. You can mind whip the book and you can describe to me how you kill it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, he's doing his bad performance, trying to whistle, but he can't because frog lips and just <laughs> blowing sounds. Because there is definitely nothing over there. And then he's going to turn and make firm eye contact with the book and say, You thought. And, <laughs> and give it the, the juice. Uh, uh, yeah, he's going to try to shatter the mind of this book. Wait, is this on a... It's a saving throw. Yeah. Hold on, there's still a chance. <gasps> it does do half. Uh, oh, I forgot. I should have rolled half damage on it early whenever it made this. Whatever. I forget. Uh, well, actually, no, because it, it passed and so it reflected it back to you. Oh, it, if so it, we're fine. like if it passes the save, it doesn't take the half. If it passes the save, the spell is reflected, so all the mm. effects are bounced off. Uh, I need to roll a uh, what save? Wisdom. Uh, int. Oh, oh yeah, right. Whoa. That is a. Oh. Is, mm, I went ahead. I got ahead of myself because yeah, the the book passes. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, the. Yeah, because I, I have a twenty-three. Uh, yeah, you have to. Yeah, yeah. Now you have to roll against your own uh, DC. Uh, yeah. Which you pass. Uh, I, still, I still take good, a good amount of damage because I rolled rock. Okay, um, so visually, very little happens. Pontifex points his staff towards the book, and there's, <clears throat> there's, it almost feels like there is a, there is a breeze in here all of a sudden, uh, despite windows being closed. Uh, and uh, um, there is a rustling in the bookshelf, and then Pontifex himself recoils. Uh, you would take half the damage, uh, even on a success. Uh, that's what we missed earlier. Uh, yeah, but so Devamia, also having seen the book, you have one chance to put an end to this. Yeah, I think the is going to run with the battle axe, not going to mess <laughs> around. <laughs> Destroy the bookcase if needed, just get this thing out of here. Uh, so let's see if that hits. I sure hope it does. Are you getting within five feet? Uh, yeah, yeah, just... We'll need a D10 that? in that case. Yeah, that's, that's fine. <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> Y'all. We're making good decisions, I promise. I was like, oh yeah, Squeak, tell me how you Squeak do this. just looks but, at Viri and you know. just gives her a look like, this is what I've been dealing with. She <laughs> <laughs> nods. She understands. Dvami comes up to the bookshelf and uh, has her axe raised and steps right in front of it and then just sort of stops. As if she kind of forgot what she was doing. <laughs> <laughs> and then roll of a five, you don't move or take actions. Can I just shoot it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you could, but uh, don't waste the projectile. So, like, if you raise your gun, it is was yeah. a surprise round from Pontifex and Devamia. Uh, <laughs> and the book vanishes. <laughs> No! <laughs> you left to do it again. <laughs> Have you not learned anything from fighting this thing? 
<laughs> this Product sucks. Hunt continues. Everything hurt. <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> We're going to do it again. <laughs> we got the intelligence over here. <laughs> Can we just play prop hunt? <laughs> I am great at prop hump, but this one reflects bullets. <laughs> okay, let me let me roll his stealth roll. And He's got the cheat codes. I'm just putting out that my bullets have never been reflected. Okay, I've got I've got his stealth. <laughs> okay, no plan. If we go to another room, and I know where that little shit is, Stop I will talking. tell all of you. <laughs> but like with my mind in it one though that worked so well for us this time because I didn't tell you because I got ahead of myself and had the cool one line they're all lined up and ready to go <laughs> Devamia are you cool Devamia uh, yeah Devamia is fine well, now uh, Wait, what happened? I just, did we get through that thing? Uh, no. Gosh, okay. Do Come on, we gotta find approach it. Approach the book. <laughs> Time for now perception checks. <laughs> <laughs> like, the mommy has actually never stepped up to that thing before, so it would make sense. <laughs> Did you say perception or investigation? Perception. We start with perception to find the floor. Okay. To, to hear anything being displaced anywhere. Natural 20. <laughs> nice! <sighs> Too many of those. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, a missing pontifex if he wants to listen. Uh, sure, yeah, this is... I suppose it's not necessary, because we have a couple of successes here. Yeah, it's fine. I'll let uh, them have this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that means <laughs> that uh, me. Squeak and uh, Devamia once more, uh, just this faraway sound of something just clanking against the surface, it's beneath you again. Only one place it could be, I think. <laughs> and down you fly or climb. Pip is still there. He lands on the basket, hoping that it is not the basket. <laughs> <it's> the, <monster. laughs> the basket uh, just uh, grows teeth. <laughs> Everything is a mimic. Uh, and once once you're all downstairs, I'll take your investigation checks. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, at first, uh, those of you who thought heard something downstairs, you, you hesitate. Looking around, you don't recall anything being out of place. You start like touching out of things. <laughs> you start touching <laughs> things, bowls, chairs, um, the bags of flour, you... you, you Push Pip over, you flip him around, make sure that uh, there's nothing beneath him. Uh, there's no traces on the ground of anything having been touched. Uh, and you look and you look, and Pontifex, your memory is just beyond the capabilities of most human, or is it only you? Only you could have ever noticed that there is one piece of charcoal in the fireplace that was not there minutes ago. <laughs> I would like to use telepathic f to speak telepathically to creatures. Uh, it's a, it is a piece of charcoal in the fireplace that was not there before. <laughs> I 
took careful note of each individual <laughs> piece of charcoal in that fireplace. This is the is mind. This is the mind that remembers mm. the position of each piece from Dragon Chess games across like months of playing them. Mate in five hundred and forty-two. <laughs> Hey, hey, but uh, seriously, uh, it is the charcoal piece that is uh, the 16th from the back, a uh, 30 degrees off of the tangent line between <laughs> the middle bit and the front bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, aim there. Also, Devami, I get back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Devami's just gonna casually, you know, examine the, the drawer. Well, make sure to whistle, it makes it more convincing. <laughs> <laughs> Who's taking the shot? Uh, notably, the Vami, you were standing right in front of the fire, probably, so you didn't feel anything. So there's like a little bit of lingering doubt in the back of your mind. Uh, but F yeah, Fear's not above just unloading her gun into the fireplace right now. So. <laughs> 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 just whatever, just I'll, take the I'll gun out, aim All the charcoal pieces. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um are, are, who who's attacking? Virian. Like if no one else does it within like two seconds of him saying it's in the fireplace, she's just shooting. Alright. Roll your attack roll. Alright. Can I can I do the steady aim thing to give myself advantage or not? Yeah. Alright. Let's do I'm just gonna reroll re -roll one of those for funsies because I can. Okay. <laughs> Critfish. That'd be very funny. Nah. Either way, All twenty-five. Right. Okay, so Virion, you get to describe how you kill it. <laughs> All right. So just as everyone's kind of like, it's in the fireplace. Are you sure it's in the fireplace? You just see Virion just pull out her gun and just shoots, just wordlessly, just bang, bang, indeed. Um. And your bullet, um, it it hits like just a pile of charcoal, and it bounces against the stone surface of the fireplace. Uh, some of the charcoal bits catch on fire from the heat of it, uh, and then the entire fireplace explodes uh, as the creature is reformed within it uh, and there isn't enough space for it and it just bursts the whole thing to pieces. Uh, each of you feel this sharp pain and this howl and this little bit of just uh, uh, fury and then nothingness the long snake-like body of this being uh, now laying down. It falls over the table uh, and a bunch of things are knocked over and chairs are pushed away and he slithers through dust it's dead. Nice. Oop. Precisely My work here is you. done. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to. Can I can I flip it over? I will try to. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Very natural. Immediately after taking that shot, you just see Virian like take out her bullet case and just kind of sigh as she puts it away after taking counts. Oh. <laughs> that was a lot of her ammo. Well done. Well done. I knew you could do it. I believed in you. Now let's loot the body. <laughs> Book. Um, but... mm -hmm. I Book. should maybe uh, crawl inside of there and look for uh, cuddles or something. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> the nice echo. <laughs> okay, so... What uh, you got in there? There was... A... What you got in there? <laughs> Squeak, you climb in... There are bones in this body in the process of being digested, and they're large, and they are the the, the uh, bones of humanoids. Uh, and then there is something that has not been digested yet. 
Um, it is a scabbard with a weapon inside. Uh, additionally, for those of you who are not inside the body of this monstrosity, there is uh, the book that he, that he was clutching uh, that now has hit the ground. I'm going to mage hand that book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look gremlin that book and give me <laughs> what this. Close that, close that. Let me just bring this back to where it was before. Okay. Uh, Pontifex, you mage hand this book to you and uh, uh, it hovers over directly in front of you. Uh, and as you lay your eyes on it, your skin crawls with this eerie sensation as uh, if you were in the presence of something both ancient and forbidden. Covers, the cover feels rough and craggy to the touch, like petrified wood made solid. And when your mage end turns the pages, they feel thin and rigid. You almost expect them to brittle and shatter, uh, but they seem resilient. The letters on the pages are etched in a jagged and angular script that seems to mirror the sharp lines and harsh edges of the dustfall landscape. And even though you cannot understand the writing, just looking at it is enough for you to feel something in the back of your mind. When you first laid eyes on his, li his litters through dust, you somehow learned his name, and now similarly you learn the name of this book, The Dust Swept Grimoire. Orm. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Orm Jr. <laughs> Orm Senior? <laughs> Epic name. Hey, Grimoire. Uh, am I able to understand anything, like, intuitively, or just the name of it? Just the name. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll use, uh, if I can, I'll use my feature to instantly ritual cast the tech magic. Or no, not at Detect Magic. Uh, identify. Oh, yeah, let's do Identify. Mm -hmm. It's a spell book. Oh. It mm -hmm. was a wizard. Oh, I should have asked what college it went to. <laughs> <laughs> I found something too. Is it that book? <laughs> no, man. No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see it. What is it? Uh, Squeak can't take it out. It's too big. He just saw it, but it's in there. <laughs> You're gonna have to come in there with me. <laughs> <laughs> I, he brought it out. It's, it's covered in probably some form of mucus, I imagine. Uh-huh. And it's still in the body, because Squeak can't pull it out. Oh. Like, it's, it's, it, you know, it's way bigger than Squeak. Uh-oh. It's in here. <laughs> hey, let me see if I can take a look. Here, um, I'll, I'll poke on the inside where it is, and then you can... You slide. know, once you <laughs> feng shui the organs, it's kind of cozy. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Can you hear me? Right here. <laughs> Stab here. <laughs> Stab me. Stand back. Tell, tell me when you're back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, can we cut it open? Okay, you, you you stab roughly in the spot where Squeak's voice was coming from. Um, and it's a bit disgusting and the kitchen is a fucking mess at this point. It just exploded fireplace. Oh, no. <laughs> There's, uh, yeah. And yeah, when, when you cut into it, it's, it's not blood that comes out, but dust. Um, <coughs> and, uh, uh, yep. You catch a glint of something shiny, and you have to kind of cut around it, and it's a takes a bit of work, but eventually, um, you manage to see and um, pull out something shiny. Um, the first thing you see is this uh, hilt, shimmering with an otherworldly iridescence, like a mirage, a, a mirage in a desert sun, and it's adorned with intricate filigree, twisting and curving, and Beautiful patterns. Do you take it? Uh, yeah, it's it's cool. Look at it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Huh. 
Uh, you stick your hand in and uh, uh, you touch it and it zaps your fingers with static oh. electricity. Uh, and you feel a strange current coursing through your hand and up your arm. And it's not necessarily unpleasant, uh, but certainly strange and otherworldly. And um, you get used to it after a few seconds, but it feels a little off. And you pull the whole thing out of the body and... Uh, uh, you're holding this sheath with this hilt sticking out. Uh, uh, the sheath itself, uh, not looking as fancy as the hilt, just made of uh, uh, of leather. So if we, if we can't tell from the sheath, if we pull out what sort of sword is it? Is a, a uh, long I, sword? I, I think you can see from the from the shape of the sheath itself because it's pretty thin. This is a rapier. Okay. Interesting. Um, it's definitely something odd about it. It gave me a bit of a shock. And I think she will pull it out of the hilt too, just to take a look at the actual blade to see if anything like about the make that stands out or anything like that. Okay. Uh, yeah, you you unsheath it, and when you do, you find that the blade is made of dust glass. It's tinted with a gray hue and it's razor sharp. And it's in stark contrast to the shimmering hilt. It feels as if any choice of color in its immediate vicinity is just always helplessly absorbed and erased by it. Uh, you feel its balance and you swing it and it, it, it hums with a sound like, winds, uh, like wind over dust dunes. So I'm not much of a expert in, in magic, things like that, but there's definitely something odd about this. It's strange, uh, if you can't tell from looking at it. Give me 11 minutes, I can tell you. Here, yeah, it's... Especially just knowing what that thing was, was capable of on its own. Anything that you could take down with this, uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, Fang is gonna... He'll take the sword and like set it on the table and I'll take 11 minutes all the people do stuff to identify it. What was the mm -hmm. name of this book? It was the Dust What Grimoire? The Dust Swept Grimoire. Dust Swept Grimoire, got it. Uh, then yeah, <clears throat> while he's doing that, you guys got 11 minutes. <laughs> 11 minutes to chill, kitchen. check on Pip, yeah, cleaning up the, uh, the kitchen, the fireplace is uh, yeah. gone. It is a disaster in here. Will it automatically repair itself? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a problem for the next. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a problem for the next sleep. <laughs> what you find out is ignore it. Are you gonna leave this body in here or taking that out too, or? Uh, no, we need to get all of it out, lest it become part of the tower, and that's just kind of <laughs> gross. Uh, so in the 11 minutes that Pontifex needs... Uh, um... I would love to help move the <laughs> of the creepy carcass monster thing. I really would, honestly, <laughs> but uh, uh, sort of busy. Luckily, the exit is right here. <laughs> uh, had, it, had this happened, I, I, I guess one good thing to come from the fact that you all missed the previous <laughs> uh, final blow is that you don't have to take it down, st uh, um, down a set of uh, down one floor. Let me just drop um, them. I'll shoot. It's fine. Um, yeah, uh, there is. I, I think you got rid of the body of cuddles already. Yeah, <laughs> you vaguely remember that. Um, yeah, I'm going to boop. I'm going to give the final. Blow was Ferion's, so you get to keep the mini in your little Ooh. chest as a as a memento. Nice. Uh, as you go outside and you toss it out, and you guys look at Orm's machines that were outside this whole time, and you're like, "Thanks, guys. <laughs> you're very helpful." Uh, Pontifex. Uh, <clears throat> I did not have. A Hold on. I didn't have the 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 sub block for the for the blade out. One second. Eh. Eh. It says here it is a luck blade. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Where is it? 
Oh, okay. Hold on. D&D Beyond is not working with me. Scroll, 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 and here it is. So, uh, this is called Dust Blade. Uh, it is a plus one rapier uh, that has a three charges, which recharge at dawn. And whenever it successfully hits a target, one charge may be expended to force uh, a constitution saving throw um, to uh, essentially... Um, hmm. Well, Pontifex, what you feel within it is his electricity, right? Uh, sort of like there is there is lining that is trapped in the blade, and uh, it's not visible, but you you feel it zapping around in there somewhere. Uh, and you know that if this were to be released, it could easily turn sand into glass. Uh, mechanically speaking, on a successful attack and on a failure from the target, on a constitution saving throw, uh, it's going to glass the ground beneath its body, beneath its feet, and it's going to uh, essentially envelop it and um, reduce its speed to his its speed to zero for a round. Hmm. Is it until the end of the creature's next turn, like the targets, or it the end of the user's It is until the end turn? of the user's turn. Uh, it is until mm. the beginning of their next uh, yeah, yeah. turn. Okay. Uh, yep, fancy sword. It uh, It's magic, it's well made, it has uh, little zappies inside of it, and uh, it turns the floor to glass. Uh, and uh, shock the hell out of things. <laughs> How you learn that part? It's like a little... I don't know. Uh, seize up their muscles or something. Uh, spooky. Well, it could definitely be useful, especially if we're uh, going to a situation where we need to get away. Uh, yeah, or uh, if uh, you want to hold it still so it doesn't get away from you so much. Like, I don't know, this thing. <laughs> it it doesn't seem to have... convenient. It doesn't seem to have worked for its previous user. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it necessarily used it. Uh, maybe it, the previous one, wasn't winning. Our situations because we were winning. You know, it had to escape. Maybe it didn't have to escape. We're just better. <laughs> maybe we are just built different. So we did have numbers on it. Helped. But uh, yeah, here you go. As the only person who seems to use a rapier. Brooke. I would rather keep my sword, but thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I you know, I know a weird half-elf that could uh, probably use that, uh, but uh, he's currently drowning in the place that you came from. Oh, bad time to remind myself. Now I'm sad. <laughs> well, if we ever see him again, I'll pass it along. Man served me well, but uh, I don't see. know. He's more of a passive. You see, like to use a walking stick instead of uh, I don't know anything useful. Punch <laughs> facts. You just run at a walking stick. Is sharp. Yeah, right now, you're not to say that you can't, you know, do some business with a walking <laughs> stick, but uh... Uh, I heard that hit. It sounded uh, pretty solid. Yeah, never done that before. I was just so <laughs> angry, you know, had me all pissed off. Hey, he's natural. in my spa. He's not where he's supposed to be. Wasn't invited. Get off my lawn. But, uh, cool book, though. Uh, you know, the sword is great and all and whatever, but like this book, I have no idea what it does, but it has a cool name. <laughs> I'm sure you'll put it to good use. Yeah. I do have a question, Winter. Hmm? What's Even up? though I I don't know what this book says, I do know that it's a spell book, right? Mm-hmm. So the things that are written in it are spells. Yes. Would I be able to transcribe the spells into my own book to be able to use them despite not knowing what they say? The answer is kind of. Um, Perfect. You need... Yeah, it, it's possible. You need to find a translator first, and once it's been translated, then hmm. you can try to transcribe the spells uh, uh, into your own book. Uh, with the additional caveat that 
Um, well, oh, sorry, you'll find out. <laughs> uh, does Devame know what this thing says? You're good with language. You know these people's stuff. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna would... go take a look. Yeah. Would she? Um, Devamia. She read earlier the um, name of the dog on her tag. And this is the same script. This is Atarian. Oh. Um, she does... She can read it. She can understand it. Well, um, again, sort of. She can read it, but it is magical gibberish that to the Vavia doesn't really mean anything. So she can tell it is the letter A, it's the letter B, but like the whole word is nonsense to her. It's not actual... Um, uh, it's not an actual like, language. They're magic words. Uh, so half of it is comprehensible descriptions of gestures uh, and of components that are needed for the spells. Those are in Atarian. The rest she can read the font, but she there is nothing to actually translate. Uh, she could help Pontifex trans translate what needs to be translated and transcribe uh, what is just arcane. And then, and there's other people that could do it because uh, Itarian is what's spoken on its Asperg Peninsula, so it's the most uh, understood of the Lidarian languages among uh, uh, Plurinan people. And from there, mm -hmm. then Pontifex could work on actually translating this into his own book. Sounds like uh, you have some homework, Devamia. <laughs> yeah, I would love to, you know, work through the burn the way the candle wick or whatever, but. Uh, I think I would just get in your way if you could just translate this, no matter how mumbo jumbo it might be. Just uh, accuracy is key, and then I will take it from there. Yeah, that's not happening right now. I have still not gotten to sleep. Yeah, you, you know. I... Whenever it is convenient for you. Uh huh. We'll figure it out. Anyways, I'm going back to Beth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh -huh. Anyone else gets attacked by a piece of cutlery, just, you know, say, oh no. Should we at least stay close to each other? Have, like, two people together? I mean, I'll, I'll be awake. Uh, I've already rested, so I'll just uh, try to take a, get this cleaned up down here, and uh, if I hear anything, I'll come running. All right. You, on the way up, you walk by Squeak standing over Pip, and he's just laying out sprigs of like fresh rosemary and thyme on his body, <laughs> and and lights a candle and just holds a little funeral vigil. <laughs> <laughs> Lays out some rocks at his feet. <laughs> oh, Pip! Rocks you love, and to rocks you have become. <laughs> it's everything you ever wanted. I, I don't. I don't think he's quite dead yet. Um, I'm not sure if you're looking at what he was working on, but he ha had a recipe for a potion that could fix this. And if I had the ingredients, I might be able to get started on it. But uh, we don't seem to have them. Oh. Oh, okay. At this moment, through the power of Squeak's ritual, as Pip perceives the stones <laughs> surrounding him, the petrification begins to fade. <gasps> and Pip, you're awake? Huh? Oh, hey. Why is there sand everywhere? <laughs> Why am I covered in plants? Well, that was that was squeak. Squeak. Why is my rock collection everywhere? <laughs> what did you do? Uh, just pushes them aside, <laughs> runs away. <laughs> What's going on? Just uh, sit up slow. Uh, um, you were turned to stone. You're better now, I think. 
I what? Yeah, it's uh, a lot. A lot happened. It's. Uh, getting... You hear the voice coming from over here. <laughs> <laughs> Double take. <laughs> I'll get used to that eventually. Uh, so what happened? It's quite late. It's uh, probably close to dawn now, actually. But uh, once you rest up, I'm sure this took a lot out of you, and we can talk more once everyone's rested and awake. Cuddles was sleeping with me. Where's Cuddles? Cuddles isn't here anymore. No. Why not? Where did she go? She said she, she said she was gonna stay with us until we found her dad. Why don't you rest first, and then we can talk more when you wake up. This is uh, you should rest first. Okay. So I'll, I'll be around, so if uh, you have trouble sleeping, let me know, but uh, I'm not going very far. It's kind of a mess to clean up down here. Experience. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ready for your long rest? <laughs> yes, please. Yes. It has been earned. Yippee. I'm fine. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> if you need it, she may have a short <laughs> rest. <laughs> yeah. Do I even need one? I'm not sure if I did anything that needs a short rest. <laughs> or the one, anyway. And just as your characters take a long rest, we also take a break. Yay! Yay. Hello! Yeah. I will see Goodbye, you in everyone. 13 minutes. <laughs> um, yeah, 13 minutes when the clock is at the 30 minutes past. Oh, it's 12 minutes now. Uh, no. Uh, uh. Wait, what, 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 what? Till, till 12 minutes? Yeah, in 12 minutes. 12 minutes, minutes from now. When it's, uh, okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. At the half hour mark. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Let us return to our table. <clears throat> Uh, but not to return to our story quite yet. Because, first, camera pans over. <laughs> uh, Taka, you are adrift in a sea of darkness, unable to discern where you are or how you got here. The air is thick and heavy, with a rotting smell that makes your stomach churn, but at, at the same time it feels more like water, despite your ability to breathe it. Your body feels weightless, as if you're floating in an empty, desolate void, but your skin is crawling with the sensation of being watched. You can hear faint whispers and murmurs echoing in the distance. And they are distorted, as if you were hearing them through water. You strain to listen, and you start to make out words in a language you don't understand. Slowly, you begin to notice the outlines of twisted shapes lurking in the shadows all around you, their eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. They seem to be closing in their fingers reaching out to grasp at you with bony claws, and there is no escape for you. Back to the party. You've <laughs> taken a long rest. Yay! <laughs> what a lovely dream. Mm -hmm. I wait to go save Tekka from the place he's definitely at. <laughs> this is fun. Good morning. Good what is morning. the plan? Um, do you need to do any preparations before you set off? I think we guys don't have a talk with Pip, but aside from that... Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Take it away. Pip is so. sitting on a bag of flour doing his typical morning ritual, which is sorting through his rock collection. <laughs> Uh, taking note of all that he has, making sure he has everything, <laughs> and he reaches down beside him, and on the ground is, uh, there's, like, 
pebbles that have been left behind from from cuddles where she's been shedding the pebbles and uh, Pip makes sure to grab one of those and place it in his pouch so that he always has something to remember her by. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Just don't need a gut punch before doing this. Uh, so I think as for a third attempt, Virian would have been attempting to make breakfast for everybody. Especially after that. And hopefully before everyone else is up, she's going to just dish out a, a bowl for Pip and just kind of bring it to him and sit down. And I told you we talk. What's this? It's breakfast. It's food. Um, sort of thing I, I usually eat uh, back home. Okay, what is it? It's uh, rice, vegetables. Uh, it's light, but it'll chew. Good start for the morning. Looks pretty good. Yeah. And they do. It's kitchen's well enough stocked. Um, Ow. <laughs> mm -hmm. This sure is better than a dried dried meats all the day and heart attack. Mm hmm you know, I told you we'd uh, talk when you woke up. Um, what happened? So I know you're young, but I'm not going to talk to you like you don't understand. You're, you're clearly out doing dangerous things. Oh. Cuddles is not here anymore because... Her dad was not lost. He came in with her and he attacked us and she attacked us and they tried to kill us and eat us. What? That's what we all thought too. It was very unexpected. But she, she didn't do it on purpose though, did she? I don't know if she... I mean, I can't talk to her like you could. Uh, it seemed like Devanya could, and I mean, you have to ask her, but it at least seemed that even if she didn't turn you to stone on purpose, she did attack us on purpose. Pip, you recall the last remark of Cuddles before you fell asleep, uh, which was a comment on how much she liked children. And suddenly, that sounds a lot more sinister than it did before. Oh, I thought she just said, I really like you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's hard. Um, so, know you liked her. Did you all get hurt? We're fine. I mean, we'll be fine. Nothing we haven't endured before, I'm sure. You got hurt. We're all fine. Because of no. me. No. Pip, you had no way to know. I'm the one who brought her here. No one else wanted to bring her here. Mistakes happen. This happens to me all the time. You're young, Pip. These things happen, but all you can do is learn. Can't dwell on them. People make mistakes. I've made a lot of them. I'm still here. It's gonna hurt, and it's gonna hurt for a while. And you're gonna think about this sometimes. I'm not gonna say it won't go away, but you just have to learn from it that not everything is always what it seems. It doesn't mean there is not good to be found out there. That's where you're wrong. What makes you th say that? That I'm wrong? Every time I think there's something good out there, it just turns out bad. How old are you, Pip? I know you're young, but... 12. You're 12. So I know it seems like there's a lot of bad, and I'm sure everything's hard right now. Since I'm over 400 years old, I've seen a lot of bad, a lot more than you have. But I still find the good, too. I 
Thanks for the food. You're welcome. As I know it's, I know it's not going to be easy, but so we're all fine. Promise. He just sits the ball to the side, <laughs> having lost his appetite, yeah. and just crosses his arms and <laughs> sits back. That's fine. Uh, Rian will give him some space and just kind of finish tidying up. Well, on that note... <laughs> oh, we're, we're in the perfect mood to set off. Yeah. <laughs> Adventure! Adventure! <laughs> <laughs> take, take back your minis. I need everyone to let my dog is actually making very sad eyes at me right now. Oh, Aww. buddy. God damn it. I just turned myself upside down. Come <laughs> <sighs> here. Here we go. Okay. Thank you very much. And I, I'll need to uh, save it like this. Perfect. Well, 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 how far have you come on your journey? Oh, there's uh, the name of the campaign in case you forgot. Hmm. <laughs> 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 Looks like I didn't save it on my map. Let me look at my notes. We're five days in. Yep. Uh, da -da 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 -da. And around here. Remember you did a double? Okay, actually, this will be fine. Um, is Brooke taking the lead? I can try again. Go for it. Because it's survival? Uh-huh. Alright, this is the one. Good job. Okay. As a as a reminder of the journey that you are undertaking. Um click click sorry. <clears throat> as a reminder of the journey you are undertaking. Uh the first time the majority of you traveled through this landscape, uh you took an entirely different path and you ended up finding the remains of stealing dread. Uh, now you are in a completely different place as you're trying to just make a beeline for Narashk. Uh, so, the landscape is not familiar to you, Brooke, uh, at all, but uh, uh, you're mainly trying to maintain the same direction and uh, um, trying to head approximately the right way, and it's so hard to tell because there's so few um, landmarks here and visibility is so limited. Um... The air is thick with swirling particles of sand and dust kicked up by relentless winds that sweep through the area. Uh, and the dust is co coating your clothes uh, and you're almost starting to like blend in with your surroundings as if the stone desert was slowly laying its claim on you. Petrified trees and shrubs stand frozen in time, their twisted forms in stark... Uh, um, stark against the monochromatic landscape, looming around you like old, gnarled sentinels. Today, the howling winds whip up fine dust into a frenzy, and it stings your eyes and chafes your skin. Orm's machines are staggering behind you, their gears screaming as they exert against the dust that has reached deep within their mechanisms. Uh, for those of you who have traveled through Dustfall before, the first time around, you may have been able to find a strange beauty to this wasteland. Uh, another worldly landscape that is as mesmerizing as it is turning out to be deadly. Uh, but right now, with visibility reduced to mere feet filled with dread, you press on, driven by only one thing. The memory of your missing friend. If you don't make it to Tekka, if you don't help him, will. Unfortunately, with this 
thought at the forefront of your mind, Brooke, come to you, the realization comes that you're actually not quite sure if you're heading the right way. It's so hard to tell which cardinal direction you're even looking at because you can't really see the sun through all this dust. The place is just very faintly illuminated. It could as well be nighttime and it would make hardly any difference. Um, you're beginning to wonder if you should tell your friends that you you think you might be lost. Uh, and as you're just trying to get your bearings and uh, um, trying to work through your anxiety and uh, open up to your friends and admit that actually you might be traveling backwards, honestly, for, for as far as you can tell. But then that feeling... That feeling in the back of your mind that someone is watching you, it's still there. And then you see it. You see ahead of you a creature, shorter than you, but uh, quite large, uh, because of the two wide wings, open wide at its side, though it is not flying, it's just modeling towards you. Uh, this is a bird much like the uh, ones you befriended uh, a while back. Uh, you see a shield vulture approaching you uh, in a non-threatening manner. And like you make eye contact with this animal and you know that feeling that you're feeling today, that's where it was coming from, from this bird. What would you like to do? The party is still behind me, right? Mm-hmm. Then just slows him down. <clears throat> um, we're getting visitors. It's the same bird we looked at X for. I think they've been watching us or tracking us. Devamia, you said you can communicate with them properly, right? Like Talix used to? Oh wait, Pip too. So, you can see what they want to do, or what they're up to. Sure. Uh, yeah, does this creature flinch or react at all if the Valia approaches? No. In fact, it seems to expect it. It just waits for you to... Step in front of it. Okay. Uh, yeah, then Devali would cast uh, Speak with Animals. Mm-hmm. What do you say to it? Have you been waiting for us? The shield vulture extends its wings. Virium, for you, this is the for you first time seeing it. It's a, it is a large gray colored bird whose wings are petrified. And for a moment you think that's horrible, but then it actually seems to just be part of what the animal is like. And so the wings are frozen in this open state, absolutely useless for flying. But they almost form these, like, uh, this couple of uh, large barriers, heavy, rough, that almost like the shell of a tortoise, it seems to be actually pretty good for defense. Um, you see the Vami approach and uh, um, start to talk to the bird and the vulture squawks back um, to the Vami and to Pip's ears. Uh, the bird says, you're going the wrong way, this way, this way, and begins to hop away from the group. They want us to follow. Pentarist? Brooke, is that the right way? It's this way. Here, here. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not quite sure if I've been going the exact same, exact right way. Okay, well, if you don't know where we're going, might as well follow, right? The shield vulture sure is taking off it? at like an angle compared to where Brooke was going, it's more to the left. I don't know if we can trust it. 
but it's not the attacking moment, us. That's a start. But at the moment, it doesn't seem like I know the way. Petals didn't attack us either. Taking directions from a bird isn't the craziest thing I've ever done. Uh, yeah, then I think the Valmy will just uh, go, yeah, go back to the shield uh, vulture and lead the way. Okay. You resume your journey and uh, uh, instead of letting Brooke take the lead, you follow the lead of this bird. Um, it's hopping is perhaps a little bit slower than you guys could uh, uh, potentially travel at. Um, but you stick with it for the rest of the day. And a couple of times throughout that afternoon, uh, you end up meeting another bird. And there's some squawking between them. And then it continues. And it happens again and again. And Brooke... Uh, that, that feeling of being watched that persisted throughout most of your journey, you realize it wasn't any one creature. Many, many shield vultures have been watching your journey. And at the moment when you got lost, it looks like they came in to help. And towards the end of the day, uh, right as you're feeling tired enough where you're starting to wonder what, whether you should uh, set up camp and uh, uh, erect your tower once again, that's when the landscape becomes familiar again. As you're approaching that hilly region where you had found the cave that ultimately led you to Narashk. And that's the moment where Devamia just picks up speed and starts running. Um... Sorry, just scrolling through my notes. Whoops. There we go. Um, and soon enough, you spot it. The entrance to that same cave. Looking a little different. Um, the, the, it is collapsed, so you can see the hole, but you can also see them... There is a bunch of uh, rubble uh, that is covering it up, but that's not the only difference. There is also a little makeshift hut next to it. And there is smoke billowing out from it and um, a couple of uh, familiar horses and a wyvern directly outside of it. M Murder Crow! A, a pack! Freda! Uh, the... Wyvern immediately takes flight, and much like a dog that is unaware of his own size, especially compared to you, uh, just slams into the Bamiya. Uh, knocks her to the ground. It's nothing for her, and she, she's quite used to it, but this could have, this could have seriously injured uh, anyone else. Uh, Virion, this is a Wyvern? And it's a wyvern just like the ones from Plurna. Um, you have actually probably killed a few of these. <laughs> uh, they, they were certainly not on your side of the war. Uh, and uh, this one seems quite friendly towards the Devamia. And as the rest of the group is approaching, uh, uh, the wyvern actually seems to be a little skittish. And this big dragon-like creature just flattens against the floor trying to make himself look as small as possible and backs away a little bit from, from you as you approach. I think you just see it, like, just as reactionary of and like, just reach for her gun for just that half second before she just kind of slowly backs away from it and just this is fine. It's it's not the weirdest We're thing the that's happened. Reaction. Mm. Used to them being a little more uh, aggressive. Uh, don't worry, that one is a coward. Uh, despite uh, Dvamia shouting, um, uh, Murder Claw is approached, but there is no sign of Freda. Uh, Pontifex, you are approached by your own horse. 
Oh, oh, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's going to hobble on over and, and pat the horse. Mm -hmm. uh, for Farum, room. I have missed you. You still have all of my stuff. Yep. The saddlebags are actually empty and the saddle is off. Uh, Farum, like everything that was on for room is uh, no longer there. Where are my brewer's supplies, Farum? I was learning to make stuff. <laughs> uh, behind Farum uh, also approaches another horse, uh, and, and where Farum is like a little bit. Um, how do I put this? More horse like. Uh, but the, the other one that follows it definitely has this like personality to her. Uh, you're going to see her just lift her legs higher up than she needs to just stomping the ground with his like uh, like look at me kind of uh, uh kind of manner and you see the horse looking around and then looking around again like she's searching for something that isn't here hey duchess we need to have a talk uh here is Duchess's mini. <laughs> you can take it momentarily, Pip. Um, as uh, yeah, Duchess is now brings her focus onto you, understanding uh, what you just said to her. Let's have a seat. Now, I'm you're a grown horse, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna talk to you like you don't know what <laughs> what I'm talking Aww. about. <laughs> Alex isn't here anymore <laughs> because well he got he got taken away and we're not really sure where he is or if he's <clears throat> we're not sure if he's gonna come back Do you understand? Even for people who can't interact with animals the way you do, or the way that the Lamia's magic allows her to do, um, the the expression on the horse's face is quite easy to understand. Uh, as her entire body language is now visibly dejected. <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> oh no! Sure, yes. Why the long face? <laughs> uh, I give you negative inspiration. <laughs> if, you, if you want to, your next one is forfeit. <laughs> if you want to, we'd be happy to have you stick around, and hopefully, we can find him again together. She stumps her hooves on the ground. She seems ready. It just gives her a, a pat on the side. <laughs> uh, if Devamia checks the hut, um, the little makeshift uh, construction that uh, wasn't here the first time around uh, um, has been obviously built with haste and with the available materials there is very little wood involved in its construction as there is next to no actual wood anywhere around here uh, and there is this like little pit in the middle of it uh, um, that is that is lit but nobody is inside at this moment uh, but she does spot a few familiar belongings that used to be Freda's, and even uh, some uh, a couple of saddles and saddlebags that she remembers used to be on the Faroom and Duchess. Ah, oh, Murder Claudia, do you two make this? This is great. But where is she right now? Um. Murder Claw appears quite proud, uh, and then his uh, draconic head turns um, 
looking off into the into the distance, away from the cave entrance. Is is she gonna be back soon? Murderclaw appears worried. Oh no. We should go after her, shouldn't we? He flaps his wings. Uh, He's ready for takeoff. Yeah. Then I think Devavia uh, will just give a shout to the group. I'm going to go find her. If you're going to go into that cave, uh, I will be back for a little while. So... And then we'll, yeah, climb aboard Murderclaw. Yeah, uh, back on Murderclaw's back. The two of you have this bond that just reaches back many, many years. You know each other so well. You're perfectly in sync. You always compensate for his shyness. Uh, and he seems quite a lot more brave whenever you are on his back. Uh, you sit uh, directly uh, it be, uh, at the... Uh, at the same part of the body where the wings are, you're aligned with them, uh, and uh, you're you hold on to the neck, and you're um, for for the rest uh, of the party. The Vamia looks quite beautiful, uh, just this knight atop a wyvern, and for a second you forget just how uh, how shy the wyvern in question is, and uh, it's quite the sight. And as as they are about to take off into the sunset. You see Freda, a small distance away, ap approaching with a uh, a bundle of uh, a very very small and unimpressive bundle of uh, of wood and leaves in her arms, um, and she looks about and drops everything she's holding. Uh, Freda for Virion, uh, this is an elf, specifically an Eladrin. And based on the color of her hair, um, she she looks like she just stepped out of a wintry landscape. Her clothes are bright. Her hair is this, like very um, pale, light blue hue. Um, and she looks kind of frail, uh, almost like a, a princess that just came out of a fairy tale. Uh, and she and Devamia make eye contact. The two people who could not look any more different. Uh, and you see them both just smile with joy. Oh, come on! We were just gonna go find you and rescue you and save the day! <laughs> just gotta stop the momentum. Jeez. The mommy laughs and runs on over to Murder Claw. Uh, gives the rest of you, like, this brief glance of acknowledgement, but hardly. Hardly any thought uh, as she makes it up to Murder Claw, and uh, once Devamia comes, uh, climbs back down, uh, they hug and they kiss. They are reunited. Oh. I, I wasn't sure if you were ever coming back. I was always going to come back to you. <laughs> where did you? Where did you come from? Please. I have a long story to tell. <laughs> oh, Devamia. Hey, it's okay. We're both safe, okay? All three of us are safe. Murderclaw wraps the two of you under his wings. And you sort of share a three-way hug. I'm sorry that you had to worry for so long. And I'm so happy to see that you're okay. <laughs> it's... It's all good now. It's all good now. Uh, come, uh, I... <clears throat> I don't think everybody can fit in my uh, little home. But, uh... Um, don't have much food to offer. Tell me everything that happened. Just minutes after you went into the cave, it uh, it collapsed. 
I just had to wait. I don't even know where to begin. And time skip. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know where to begin, but you find uh, that the best place to begin is the beginning. Um, you tell her everything. Everything about Narashk, about what happened there, how you escaped, where you ended up, and what happened on your way back. Uh, do, do you skip anything? Hmm... I think I think probably the Vamia wouldn't like put emphasis on how dangerous it was at times, like not to worry afraid any further. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I don't think there's a reason to skip anything. All right. Um, and in in this occasion, um, Biron, you, uh, you, you hear a tale, um, that I do believe has been shared with you before, perhaps with different details, um either more or less in detail, but um, it seems that uh, this, this woman, this ladrin, was separated by the others uh, a little bit before they found this uh, uh, underground uh, uh, civilization. Uh, and so she was waiting for everybody in the week that it took you guys to come back. Uh, so it seems like you have saved... Um, you have been reunited with the majority of the people that have been left behind, uh, although your understanding is that the, the person uh, that has been taken away uh, still needs to be located. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, with this being uh, effectively nighttime, um, do you wish to set up your tower and rest for the night, or would you like to um, try to find uh, a way back uh, inside uh, uh, towards Narashk. Discuss. I'll say that as for Pip, um, ever since he stopped talking with Duchess, he's been he's been moving rocks away from the entrance, just one at a time. Okay. Um, quite the task. You like rocks, but right now they're not cooperating with you, and the majority mm. of these boulders uh, are, like, your size. Um, you vaguely remember that you had heard the entrance collapse shortly after you guys had stepped in, um, realizing at a later time that it was probably the doing uh, of, the, of the dragon that you later fought. You know what? Uh, do I know what? I'll tell you what. Huh? <laughs> I think Pip's going to get some help. <gasps> From the machines? Oh, hmm, that's an idea. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> I, sorry, what were you thinking? <laughs> uh, Pip turns into an elephant. <laughs> oh! Pip turns himself into a, uh, a walking monolith, or a wandering monolith, or, and ah. just starts moving huge rocks aside with his trunk if he can. Okay. Which is something y'all have never seen before. <laughs> no! Yeah. Well, right before everyone's eyes. Uh, Pip, what's, what's your transformation like? It's so, a polymorph, yeah? Yeah, so Pip... Um, he takes out his doll and he starts rearranging the limbs and uh, takes a takes a lump of coal from his pouch and starts smearing the side of it, transforming its white uh, exterior into more of a gray look. And he looks at it clearly satisfied with what he's done and he holds it tight to his chest and just all of a sudden starts growing and morphing uh, into this creature. Mm -hmm. An elephant with stone tusks. 
Uh, I am adding right now to your Carter sheet. Uh, I'll put it under a uh, wild shape if that's good enough. Uh, the name of the elephants of uh, Dustfall. It is the Wandering Megalith. Megalith. And it is now in your Carter sheet. With a base strength of 22, uh, it will certainly make it a lot easier than Pip's little noodle arms uh, <laughs> could have done. <laughs> Virion, still not the strangest thing you've seen? Uh, you know what? We're getting used to it. <laughs> <laughs> She's 400 years old. She's seen some shit. Mm -hmm. So I'd say as far as whether resting or pressing forward, I think Virion generally would um, kind of let people who have to actually sleep take the make the decisions on that front because I think she is a bad um, judge of when people actually have to rest. Putting murder claws mini on Sid's side of the table and uh, oh. uh, need to find Freda. Where did I put her? Um, yeah, oh, I what? think. Yeah. There she with is. the bomb, yeah, just having reunited with the people she cares about, I think she would feel super guilty not helping. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, she she's ready to commit. Um. Help them find Tekka. Dig mm -hmm. up of the, the cave. Yeah. Okay. The rest of you? Uh, Brooke? Pontifex? I, uh -oh. I think... Sorry, go ahead. I just heard a sound from Dennis, but not his voice. Alright, well, um... <laughs> yeah. Oh. No. oh no! Funky microphone! Oh, Alright, no. well, let's hear, let's hear from Matt. Yeah, I think Pontifex, um... Is there... So the... His whole Furum saddle is just gone, right? Uh, it is, but, um... Uh, the the Vami did find that, uh, the the horses' belongings have just been removed for their comfort, uh, and everything has been kept uh, untouched within the little hut that uh, that uh, Freida has built. Uh, mm -hmm. So, like, after after a moment of, like, being like, where's my stuff? Uh, the, the, the Vami and Freida will be able to, like, reunite you with uh, uh, Farum's belongings, and you can put the saddle back if you'd like. Okay, great. Yeah, that's that's what he's going to... Like, uh, uh, I'm not good for these sort of sappy moments, so I'm just going to work. I mean, if there is, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna take time refitting Farum. Mm-hmm. Like, if we're intent on going forward, I can see if I can maybe find a less direct way in. This looks like it might take a while to clear. I wish I could help, but, uh... I'm sure, I'm sure you're doing your best. Yeah. I mean, I could blow it up, but, uh... Probably not super helpful. Yeah, without knowing what it's like on the other side, it could be unstable. So there might be another entrance. Um, I can take a quick look around while they're working to see if maybe I can save us some energy. Um, Viren, so you, you'd like to find a different entrance, yeah, essentially? Yeah, just take a quick scout around the area while they're working to see if she can find another entrance. Okay. Uh, go ahead and uh, roll a survival check for me. Okay, I'm good at these. <laughs> nice. Sometimes Four. that works. Okay. Um, while the Vami and Freda were, were talking, uh, Freda mentions that uh, she... Uh, this was something that she attempted. Uh, she had tried, especially by, with the help of Murder Club, by, by flying around. She had tried to find a different cave entrance and to perhaps manage to find a way to you guys. Um, and she had to find a non, or at least none that actually connected back to uh, the same system that you guys disappeared into. Um, and you hear this and you're like, well, I'm still going to take a look. And you take a look, and uh, without the advantage that she had from being in the air, uh, you 
circle around this hilly landscape and uh, um, with with such low light and visibility and dust in your eyes uh, um, you you don't find anything that she has missed um, at least and not in thing. like you weren't gone for more than an hour yeah uh, perhaps yeah, if you guys like go far yeah <clears throat> Um, and during that hour, the the uh, <laughs> the wandering megalith, uh, Devamia's arms. Um, I'm assuming uh, he's gone, but Brooke was probably helping because he's also pretty st strong. Um, you make progress. Um, things are coming loose, and uh, um, there's this initial period of work where every time you move a rock there's another one that falls in its place and you move another rock and it gets replaced right away and you dig and you dig and you dig until the structure um, of the entrance of the cave seems to begin to stabilize a little bit um, so I'm going to ask not the wandering megalith because it doesn't really have a um, human-like intelligence. So I'm going to leave it... Oh, Brooke isn't here. Um, it Devania... It's exactly as smart as the elephant. Wait, really? <laughs> yes. Both have seven intelligence. Oh, it does! <laughs> Wait. No, it... The Wonder Megalith has three. What? Not the sheet you put on here. What? Why, why, why does it look different? Uh? Oh, no. <laughs> do, I, do I have two? <laughs> A prodigy. What? You're right. How is this possible? How could this be? <laughs> I, there's only one sheet. Oh no. It is bizarre. If it's still about moving the rocks out of the way and I'm still there, I'm helping. Sorry, I'm back. <laughs> um. So I vaguely remember. Oh, you can't do that from the Indie Beyond. I wish you could click on it and just open its sheet in a different tab. Right, just change it. Um, because yeah. I I remember that sometimes it looks different. Like some actions will not show up. Does this happen before? Um, I hmm. see new actions. How unusual! It's probably because I built it off of like a. a an existing stat block, but he should not remember what it looked like before. It's weird. <laughs> okay, the Wonder Megalith's intelligence is three. Um, okay. And if I dumber than your average, yeah, elephant. I'm going to uh, link it to you, uh, okay. and we will figure out later why this is happening. <laughs> um, Dennis, welcome back. Can I hear your voice? Yes. Can yes. You hear me? Wonderful. You can. Gorgeous. Um, what was I talking about? I need Brooke and I need the Vamya. What kind of check can it be for like establishing the stability the structural stability of a cave? Nature? Stone cunning, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it a nature check. Sounds good. Let me get up my character sheet. Your nature is a plus, plus two. Does two. it have an advantage? Only on... Ah, uh, yeah, not in, not in this case. No. Oh, Can't look at always. you. Matching. Um, as far as you can tell, as, uh, as you get to the point where removing rocks doesn't immediately cause more to fall down, mm. you feel I like the... Hey. You feel like the... Um, it should hold? You probably wouldn't want to, like, stomp around in there once you are done clearing it, and you wouldn't want to, like, knock on the walls, but you feel like it's... At least you should be able to walk through. Uh, it took you... It took about an hour to reach a point of, uh, of uh, uh, moderate stability, which might be the moment when Pip's spell runs out, but then all you have to do is just clear what's left on the ground in order to be able to actually walk through. So it took you an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, um mainly thanks to Pip's uh, uh, impressive form. Um, so yeah, the cave is open before your eyes. Uh, Virion? Yes? 
as you were wandering back towards the cave and you were still um, a small distance away, you had a couple of hills uh, of dust separating you from the group, um, you came across another one of those same birds. Uh, there seems to be a lot of them around here, the ones with the wings made of stone. Uh, and this one has uh, is not alone. Uh, she is followed by five tiny hatchlings that are wo that are wobbling behind her as she walks around, and she pauses to look at you, and then keeps on moving. You know, seen weirder shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think as she, when she returns, she would maybe like mention it, just offhandedly. Just those birds are. There's a lot of them around here. We've seen a few. Actually, we've only seen birds. Every animal has been a bird. Fields. <laughs> it's true! I mean, I'm pretty sure I saw some that weren't birds, but... Go off, I guess. <laughs> so it looks like you got the entrance clear. Are we continuing on? Do we need to rest? I'm worn out, but I think nighttime might be best to strike. If you are at all. Mm. They expect us either way, right? Or they don't. Is there, I know you've you've been there. I haven't. It's you say it's under underground. Is is nighttime a different there? Is or people will be asleep, less eyes. I would presume they still have some semblance of circadian rhythm or something. You do recall that the, the cave system that you live in has some holes to the surface where you could actually see the sunlight shining through. Uh, so you, even from all the way underground, you could kind of tell if it was daytime or not. Um, that's how it was raining in right before you left. How long did it take to clear the rubble? An hour and a half. Okay, so so Pip's back in Pip form. Yep. Uh, I think he would just say, I'm, I am a little tired, but if you give me an hour, I'll be good to go. Why don't we all rest, son? So we're fully powered up. We have to get in there with all we can anyways, right? And the cover of nights is whatever we can get will be helpful. So more people sleep, the better. More shadows to walk through, the better. So I'm sure you're right, we will be expected, but... Like a challenge? Okay, let's wait till the night's in. Uh, do you plan to take a long rest, or do you just wait until it's nighttime to go in? Just, just making sure I'm understanding. A, would we wake up from a long rest still during nighttime? If you wanted to go to sleep a little earlier, you could wake up a few hours before dawn. Yes. Would we want to do that then? Do we need that? Uh, the Vamia does not eat, lead, need a long rest. Well then. Mechanically, Pip only needs a short rest. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go short rest then. Okay, you just take a small break and you make, you make preparations for running into the cave. Um, let's see. There comes a moment halfway through your break as you're discussing your plan of action, um, just a small distance away from the cave. You didn't feel the need to, to whip out your tower uh, for the time being, because you'll just be using it later when you actually go to sleep. Um, part of the cave entrance that you have just cleared collapses back down. Um, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's a small delay, but that's that's a moment when the when Orm's machines... Uh, um, 
they they intervene they begin to clear the rubble again and this time one of the giant mechanical snakes positions itself in the entrance uh, to provide support to um, to the top and to the side walls effectively effectively remaining stuck there but making sure that this does not happen again I wish I'd done it to begin with. And then you complete your short rest. Mark it on your sheets and uh, you're ready to go. Let's do it. Yeah, let's rock. All right. You all head inside the cave. Um, for Theron, who hasn't been here before, uh, everything... Uh, is new uh, the she, she'd sit inside of the cave much like the rest of the journey thus far uh, there the ground is covered in dust even the walls are covered in dust but the further in you go the the less dusty it appears to be uh, you are down one machine as it is uh, still stuck in the entrance but the rest of them come with you and they seem to understand it to to be light on their mechanical feet uh, and not uh, not uh, uh, make too much noise or uh, uh, risk the, the cave collapsing back on you again. And uh, for the first stretch of the journey through the cave system, everything is fine and it's very quiet. No giant lizards pose any danger to you, no snakes. And uh, you arrive... Uh, um, to a part of the cave that was um, uh, about halfway between where you found the dragon and uh, but beyond the spot uh, uh, sorry I'm, I'm saying this wrong uh, before the part where you had trapped the dragon but after the part where you had originally seen it I started running away from it um, and this is you've been traveling downward for a while through for a while through this cave system and uh, everything has begun to take on a, a slightly more bluish hue um as you remember it Viren, you're you're observing this for the first time how the stone is beginning to look blue and there's little sources of light sprinkled here and there crystals beginning to to grow up from the ground and sideways through the walls and it's starting to become quite pretty and you figure actually there's Definitely a lot of uh, um, money that could be made here from, from these natural crystals. They look like they are charged with energy. Um, you begin to see vegetation, which in dust fall was so incredibly rare. You see plants, uh, um, flowers, mushrooms, some actual leaves on, on the plants. Um, but what stops your journey? Um, Long before you can get to the part where the you had left the dragon, where you had trapped the dragon, is the fact that at some point, uh, whoever is in the lead, let's say Brooke, you step in water. And you realize that from this point onward, the cave appears to be flooded. Oh, shit. Oh, it actually happened. <laughs> well... That changes the, t the situation. How do we proceed? And you know, this about better than I do. Does it keep going down from here? Is this going to be a, a drowning risk? Or is it just going to be a walking through water situation? Um, since the cave keeps going downward, it... Um, Everything from here on out, like, if you, if you wade into it, you would eventually end up have to swim and fully submerge yourselves. From the memory of your companions, it might take a few minutes uh, to f swim through the rest of the cave system to actually emerge into the city they're trying to reach. If I know anything that's that uh, swimming through... Unfamiliar caves is dangerous work, and should probably avoid it if possible. It was still down there. He 
Et c'est... Et c'est où D'accord. I hope they're just all drowned there. Doesn't seem very productive. I'm sure any, note. any sort of city that's been down here long enough to be a city has had rain and water down there. They're sure they're equipped for whatever happens. So, but do you think we should try to find another way around if possible? Okay, so you said there were lights from the top, the way that light came through is possible that we could find a way in from above. It's not requires some backtracking, but... Uh, this I, is true. I, uh, I could swim down and take a look. See if there's another entrance or way in or something. This might not be a I bad could, idea. I could go a little bit in. Just... So Squeak is not entirely alone. I, mean, I, can, I, know how, I know how to swim. I can hold my breath for a while, just not forever. Uh, neither can I, but a uh, long time. I'm good. Just not as yeah. athletic. So as, as, you, like as, you learned, uh, as you learned, Varian, my, my people live in the ocean, so... Yes, uh, so I, I trust you with the task. All right. As far as you want to come in with me, Professor. Well, just to get a, a quick peek, but uh, I will turn back before too long. So Pontifex and Squeak, is Viren going? No, she'll stay back. Okay. Uh, Viren, generally, with, with, with your line of work, if, you're, if you ended up in the water, something went wrong. Um, yes. But still, you are a strong swimmer, and like in, in any other situation, you would have gone for it. But the fact that it's a cave system, yes, ah, yeah, you. you understand. Uh -huh. uh, so, Pontifex and Squeak, uh, Squeak becoming Squink? Yep, Squink. You're right. Nice. <laughs> uh, a little octopus. <laughs> um, Squid. The two of you submerge yourselves, and uh, following your own memory of the twists and turns in this, uh, uh, in this cave system, you you continue. Uh, Pontifex, for you, uh, you can naturally, um, perhaps breathe is the wrong word because you don't breathe the way other humanoids do in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, it feels nice to submerge yourself. You know that you can't, uh, you are still meant to expose yourself to air regularly, but uh, mm -hmm. it is not uncomfortable and it's not going to be for a long time. Uh, squink, of course, uh, right at home. Uh, the two of you make it uh, further in and further in and uh, uh, you reach this particular area. And the first thing that the two of you notice uh, is that that uh, um, that magical source of... Uh, let me build it. There's probably some things in here that shouldn't be here. Um, Okay. No, it's good. All right. You arrive here, uh, and uh, there's a few differences in this area. Notably that this force field is gone, and so is Cloudfallen. Um, can I pick it up? Uh, hey! Nice. Um, so the area is still luminous. The crystals uh, shining their, uh, their lights across the room, um, but... The whole thing is entirely submerged, and you don't see that light anymore. Uh, and you don't see the skeletal chained dragon anymore either. And you push a little bit further, and you get over here uh, to find out that uh, the uh, the bars are lowered again. But uh, you remember the code Pontifex, you don't have to mm -hmm. go through all the combinations again. It seems Please, like it I has can, not been changed. <laughs> Place. I can remember some numbers. 8008. Uh, and you make your way through. Correct. Um, and around another couple of bends, you reach Narashk. Um, well, this looks whoop. familiar. And is this whoop. it? Should be it. 
On the way, were there any pockets of air that either one could see? No, no, there weren't. Oh, you know what? Let me roll for it. Actually. Is Narashk underwater? This is possible. Uh, yes, there were, actually. There were there were a few. Uh, far uh, apart, but less than a minute apart from one another. Um, they would have been hard to find, uh, especially for somebody who may not have had uh, maybe dark vision or would not have had the time to look for them. But since uh, Pontifex and Squeak are comfortable underwater, they could have located them easily. Uh, and yes, the entirety of Narashk is underwater. All the sources of light, all the torches I used to be next to, all these little huts are gone. The floating crystal that used to shine light in the middle of the pedestal is gone. Uh, the enormous skull of uh, stealing dread is still far off in the distance watching and almost looks like a sunk ship at this point. Uh, th there is... It's all quiet... There is no movement, and uh, it, well, mm. you do spot something. For a moment, you could have sworn something swimming through the water, something, something big. And there it is. Kind of peacefully, almost. Uh, almost as if enjoying itself. Uh, the undead dragon that you had fought previously. Is the only thing left in here. Yeah, I, without the need to breathe air, it is exploring the place all on its own. Um, Squeak goes up right next to Pontifex and says, There's a back entrance, right? <laughs> Uh, I think I have an underwater sound effect. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> One was more manual than the other, but the point is across. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried about the building that Perkle was in. Well, Granny, you'll check that and I'll check the back entrance. <laughs> Talking to a squid is weird. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they'll, they'll march their way. Repeat for me what you're doing. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I was cackling. <laughs> what are you checking out? Squink's and, going through the mouth of the dragon to check out the back entrance. The mouth of yeah. the dragon? If I'm recalling, the, that's, the where the, the, head, the, yeah. Yeah, that's where the, the secret back passageway was that we well, never went through. Was it the one exit Am that, I making like, that up? <laughs> I, I do. So you guys explored the, like, far away from this town and you found, like, this far away possible exit that you were told not to approach and you couldn't? It wasn't through the mouth of the dragon, it was just, like, beyond the skull in that direction. Uh, oh. Um, so it's, like, further away from, like, what's currently on the table, uh, beyond the boundaries of, like, the heart of Narashk. Okay. Uh, so you, you just wait for Cloud Fallen to not be directly in your path, and as the, yeah. the, the dragon is just swimming away, using its uh, uh, broken wings to kind of propel himself through, through the water, um, you swim past it. Um, and roll a stealth check. Oh, the, no. Both of you. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else has ever rolled a minus three at disadvantage, but here we are. <laughs> I believe in you. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah, it was a 19 and a 20, and then it ever so slightly fell over to the four. That was almost the wildest dice roll of all time. <laughs> are you wearing? Are you wearing heavy armor right now? Yes. 
Okay. Uh, your swimming is more like you're walking across the, yeah, it's, the bottom. Yeah, his armor of weighs feet. him down and he walks on the... He's not athletic enough to, like, actually be good at, like, swimming. Mm -hmm. Let alone with all his gear. No, he's weighed yeah. down like an anchor and just walks. <laughs> you, do, you do little hops. Every time you gain a yeah, little bit of height, you just sink back down. <laughs> the moon bounces. Uh, Squink is, like, taking off ahead of you. Uh, you are, like, traveling at your own usual speed, even less than usual. Uh, well, well, the squid is like could have done laps around you at this point. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and like you wait for Cloud Fallen to have gone around the corner. There's uh, a lot of uh, crystal-like formations where it eventually disappears behind one of them, and the coast is clear. Uh, and you go ahead, and you're uh, you're traveling past the skull, and you come around a bend, and you end up face to face with Cloud Fallen. The undead chained dragon. That's where we're going to take a little break. Whoa. Um, move on to something else, something Sorry. different. Uh, Pekka. And here. Um. You guys forget everything about the Narashk and the underwater cave system and uh, uh, Pontifex's current situation uh, as uh, the camera pans away at uh, something else entirely. Uh, a different place and a different time, too. Uh, Becca, all these arms are reaching for you. And the hand that touches you first is different from all the other ones. Pale, thin, the size of your entire torso, the skin partially translucent, and you can see the, the veins and the, the bones within. And when it enters your field of vision, all the shadows around you screech and disperse. You feel yourself... Uh, uh, pulled upward, and you hear a familiar um, voice. Let's call it that, because it's not quite a voice. It does not uh, speak with words. It does not speak with a language, uh, but instead with a symphony of thoughts and emotions that seem to resonate deep within your soul. Ah, lost ones, so many mortals look upon you and see a devil's visage, such that even the sea may start to believe it. But nothing could be further from the truth. And you break through the surface of the darkness and bathe in sunlight. You are dry, warm, standing in a vastly different scenery. A breathtaking, otherworldly desert opens up before you, as if nature itself had taken a paintbrush to the endless expanse. Uh, whoop! Wrong song. Here we go. <laughs> there we are. You see undulating hills of shimmering sand, with each ripple of grain reflecting the sun's warmth and casting a beautiful warm glow. The sky above you is bright, uh, a bright vibrant blue with a few wispy white clouds slowly drifting across it. The air is clean and dry and it fills your lungs with a comforting feeling, uh, as if you are taking in the very essence of the desert itself. Ahead of you, the short, colorful people living here seem busy with a joyful day. The town's buildings are constructed from beautiful, polished wood, supported by tall, sturdy legs that bury into the sand and hold the floors a few feet above the ground. Each building is adorned with intricate carvings and murals, showcasing the community's pride and love for their home. You see the locals wearing shimmering hoods of varying colors, each one as unique as the individual wearing it. The hoods glisten in the sunlight, creating a kaleidoscope, <laughs> kaleidoscopic display of colors. 
Strange animals float effortlessly in the air, like giant colorful bubbles, seemingly weightless and unencumbered by gravity. Each one is a different shade of the brightest, most vibrant colors you have ever seen, each seeming to pulse and glow with life. Where Dustfall was monochromatic, dead and hostile, you'll here you feel that you feel peace and belonging in this oasis in the midst of the desert. But despite all this, there is also this lingering sense of separation. You're not really there. You can't mingle with them, speak with them, live with them. At least, not yet. But the presence behind you extends a wordless invitation for you to one day join them. You feel a gentle breeze caressing your skin and a shadow upon you that does not feel cold. You turn around and before you stands a being as tall as a tree, their bodies translucent as if made of shimmering glass, and as you gaze upon them you can see the intricate network of veins and bones within. Sunlight dances across their form, casting a myriad of colors all around you. There are no clothes upon them, but the way they hold themselves seem to convey a sense of modesty and grace. You cannot see their legs as their form seems to fade into nothingness, and you feel no fear in their presence. They stand so still that you almost wonder if they are alive. Despite their lack of eyes, you feel their attention upon you, and it's almost motherly. Eka, is there anything you'd like to tell them? I'll be here one day. I accept your invitation. Although there is nothing resembling an expression on this being, you can feel the smile. And then you are ripped away from the dream once again. And that's where we'll end the session. <gasps> Great stuff. Right. Why do we keep ending each session on a the press person dies here cliffhanger? <laughs> <laughs> Stop being yeah, that thing that he just fought not long ago. It's back and it's just him. Well, maybe you need to stop finding things that are trying to kill you. No, I want to though. <laughs> Well, how about maybe Squishy Cleric Wizard does stops going off alone? No. 1v1 the dragon, <laughs> Pontifex. Do it. I feel like he maybe wants his gem back. It's okay. I've got a plan. <laughs> is it wrong? I'm glad you do, because I don't. <laughs> My plan is lightning and zap everything, including probably myself, to death. <laughs> go out like a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Just drop the toaster in the city and see what happens. <laughs> if I'm going out, I'm taking this whole city with me. <laughs> the world will remember me. Hey, if you need it for your recap, Sid, I, I tried to write down literally everything that Winther said in all of your cutscenes. I tried to do that too. <laughs> Damn. Collab. Just transcribing. You have that like I, special I keyboard. <laughs> yeah, the the stenographers. That keyboard. one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, are we? What? Uh, what day is next week? Are we good next week? I should be. I yeah. think so. Okay. Uh, not Easter yet. <clears throat> it will be the twenty sixth. Yes. All right then. Yeah. Very, very well. I will see you next Sunday, everybody. I hope yeah. you had fun. Thank you for the session. It oh, was so good. Oh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for DMing. Oh, Great always a pleasure. Thank you, Joy, for that recap and for the art. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it yeah, filled my idea. heart with happiness. Good. Expect more. Oh. <gasps>
Ooh. Expect more inspiration. It's, it's <laughs> <lovely>. <laughs> I'll give want. you my inspiration for that too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait until I need it. Pull it together. <laughs> and yeah. Um I will, I will that's where I'm gonna uh, stop the stream. Bye everyone. Keep your hands off said Matt. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.